it's time to deck the halls with a little basketball. Just the season for some great college hoops. It's the greatest gift for any sports fan. Watching your favorite team as you prep for the holiday season and as your wrapping presents at home, we bring you some good tidings, joy, and a great game as the Lopes welcome in the Longwood Lancers. The holiday spirit is about here at GC Arena as well as outside as family and friends trickling in here to watch the game. An earlier tip-off tonight, so we thank you for joining us early right here on Your View, Cox Channel 4. I'm Kate Longworth. Welcome to the Lopes pregame show. Well, as you can tell, we're a little festive here. Our crew, this is our last game heading into our uh, Christmas break. So we're kind of celebrating with some loud clothes. This is part of a celebration with our ugly sweater night. So that is just a little teaser of what's to come. But one thing that has not been ugly, well, it's the Lopes defense as of late. Dan Marley has said to his team, yes, I want you to find that good shot and obviously make it. We know the team with the most points at the end of the game, well, they win the game. But when your offense is off a bit, like the Lopes has struggled, well, it's defense that wins the championships, and this team has bought into that philosophy. I think right now, um, you know, we haven't been, we haven't shot the ball extremely great so far this season. Um, so at the end of the day, our defense is kind of what's, you know, carried us. And so, so basically, Coach always talks about let your defense feel your offense. Um, you know, when you get stops, that'll lead into transition buckets, some easy baskets, and that'll, you know, get us into more of a rhythm. Uh, offensively, you know, it's just not not about worrying about making shots, but if we're getting stops, playing hard, that just fuels you. And so we put a huge emphasis on it. Coach is talking about, uh, you know, we just got to play harder than them. Um, and that starts on the defensive end. It just sets the tone for the entire game. And Dan Marley has been impressed with his team really turning up the defense. He's been working on that as their bread and butter so far this season, and it's been showing up out on the court. And now also showing up on the court in a way that you just can't miss them. It's our broadcast team. Let's welcome in the very lovely dressed Barry Mutel and Scott Williams. Guys, you're looking good. Thank you very much. Thanks, Compliments of uh, Oppa suits. Yeah, I like these. They are. Uh, we should wear them year round. <laughs> Yeah, let's not go that far. Okay. <laughs> what a big bounce back game it was for the uh, Lopes after uh, a double overtime loss at Boise State. They come back and take care of the Delta Devils. They really did. They needed that game to get that bad taste out of their mouth. And what did they come out and perform on both halves uh, of the basketball game defensively? Flat out got it done. I mean, holding uh, Mississippi Valley State to 27.5% field goal shooting. And they really got on the glass. I love that. So not only just playing good defense, forcing them into some tough shots, but then rebounding that ball and then letting that get out and ignite your offense. 49 rebounds. They shot the same from the arc as they did from the rest of the field. Great job for the Lopes. 71-38 over the Delta Devils. How about coming off the bench? 30 plus points the last four games for the Lopes bench. And Matt Jackson has uh, come to play. Yeah, the muscle from down under. This guy is moving much better. Obviously, that back was a uh, hindrance in the past. No longer has got a bounce in his step, to be sure. He came out off that bench and knocked down his first three-point shots from behind the arc, finished with 11 points and, and five boards. And I just really like his energy. He is a spark uh, for that bench mob. He's doing well. Three of five from the arc. And when you talk about three-point shooting, we saw the numbers against the Delta Devils, but three-point shooting starting to awaken here. Yeah, I mean, after you know, previously the uh, previous three games, the uh, shooting uh, just yeah. uh, tw 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 uh, tw 23%, uh, 25 of 98. I mean, they come out and then knock down 40% against Mississippi Valley State going 11 for 27. And I like the ball movement that got the three-point shooters open, the penetrations and the pitch, the back screens, the flare screens, the down screens, so effective of giving shooters extra time to get their feet set and really eye the basket. Longwood Lancers come in from the Big South Conference. Their record overall, three and nine before their conference gets underway. They were at Arizona State. They held them to five points at the half, but then the Sun Devils tore away in the second. Yeah, and, and uh, they, they played tough. Uh, they did what they needed to do. They took care of the basketball early on, didn't turn over a whole lot. Were able to get their offense running. BK Ash was, uh, was really on fire in that first half. It was clearly that uh, in the second half, that's what their focus was to try to stop this, this uh, the senior leadership. BK Ash was uh, lighting it up in that first half. I mean, he's averaging 
36 minutes over his last four games. He's got 1,000 points for his career, so that's one player that the Lopes will have to lock in on tonight. They are out, uh, their leading scorer, Isaiah Walton. He may or may not come back. He's missed the last couple of games with a groin injury. We'll see if he comes back. He's averaging up over 17 points per game. So coach may want to hold him out as he gets ready, or they do, for conference play. BK Ash, a big 14 points on Monday night in that loss at Arizona State. Pate will send it back to you as we blind everybody's retinal cavity. <laughs> Don't adjust your TV, it is working just fine. Meanwhile, guys, we've talked about the Lopes taking pride in their defense as of late. And Scott, I wonder back to your playing days, do you remember being on a team where defense was what was winning you the games? Maybe your shots were off, but you guys were still coming out victorious because you can hang your hat on that team. Well, absolutely, Kate. I mean, I, I go back to my Bulls teams all the time when I talk to young players about defense. We had the best score in the league. was also our best defensive player. He took pride in it, Michael Jordan. I mean, he was a defensive player of the year, one year, always one of the first team members. So when he sets a tone for it, Scotty Pippen, those guys are flying around out there. It makes it infectious, and that's what these Lopes team have. We had Josh Braun and Casey Benson have really bought into this defense, uh, and it's, it's really affected the guys like uh, Oscar Frere and Jared Martin, even um, Matt Jackson now doing a much better job on the boards and the young freshmen as well. They're learning how Coach Marley has established this program and if you want to see playing time, you're going to have to play defense. Yeah, exactly. This bench is deep, so obviously the Lopes players going out there every night as a team trying to win the game, but also fighting for a little playing time because you know the next man up, he'll get the job done if you can't. Well, along those lines, one guy we know who can get the job done are Barry Battelle, and he goes one-on-one -on -one with another guy who gets it done. Dan Marley, right after this, he'll take you through what's the game plan against Logwood, plus prepping for the team, taking a little bit of a road trip. And if nothing else, I'm sure you want to stay tuned to hear what Dan Marley has to say with Barry dressed very fine in his auto suit. That's all coming up next. My name is Anthony Perez, and I earned my master's in education at Grand Canyon University. I feel that the degree program at GCU definitely got me ready and prepared me to be an agent of change so that way I can lead my classroom to find innovative ways of solving the problems in education in the state of Arizona. Grand Canyon University definitely has a vibrant campus that has many resources that are accessible. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. I'm Mary, I am a sophomore at GCU, and I'm studying biomedical engineering. GCU is definitely preparing me for the next chapter in my life. Biomedical engineering is not easy. We are able to interact with the doctors and provide the tools they need to be successful. I want to be able to start my own company and create the crazy technologies that the doctors are using, and that way when I see them, like, that's my product right there. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Head coach Dan Marley and the GCU men's basketball team hit the road for the first of four straight games starting Saturday when the Lopes travel to Louisville to take on the cards. Louisville, under new head coach David Padgett, has put together a 9-2 and two start with their two losses to top 25 programs. Tip-off is set for 11 a.m. Arizona time. Tune into the Fanatic 1580 a.m., 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM in the East Valley with Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper on the call. Lopes pregame show continues from GCU Arena on this game before Christmas. We are in the uh, holiday spirit, at least one of us is. As you uh, travel. Glad it's you and not me. <laughs> As you, what, you, you're envious, I know you are. I can see it in your face. How about traveling on the road, as I just mentioned, to, uh, to Louisville, Illinois? You got some, uh, some road games coming well, up. Well, if you're a basketball player, you don't get holidays a lot. So, uh, you know, I'm used to it. I don't know if our guys, you know, being here on campus and uh, you know, might as well get on the road and, and enjoy ourselves and get out and play some really good competition in Louisville and get to play at the Orleans where, you know, the WAC tournament's going to be held and then, of course, going to Illinois against a, a Big Ten team. So, uh, obviously, we have a lot of work here to do tonight, but I'm anxious to get on the road and uh, to get tested, and it'll be good bonding for our guys, and uh, we'll see what happens. After a, a tough double overtime loss at Boise State, you guys came back here and, uh, and rebounded with a big win over Mississippi Valley State. Yeah, you know, we, we a little sketchy the first half. We, you know, made, I think, nine field goals, and seven of them were three-pointers. So 
Uh, once again, didn't shoot the ball well. I thought the second half we did a better job of moving the basketball, got it inside, and, and overall did a really nice job, especially defensively, to hold them to, uh, to 38 points is, is, was special because that was one of our goals to try to keep them under 40 and a field goal percentage under 30, and that's not easy to do no matter who you're playing. So I think our guys were focused, and they understood that they had to come out and play well, and we were able to do that. And, you know, these are guys, the kind of games you're kind of worried about, especially tonight. Uh, you know, we all know we have to play well no matter who we're playing, but... You know, we leave right after the game, and obviously playing against Louisville, our guys are going to be excited about that, but you can't overlook anybody. Well, your bench hasn't overlooked anybody the last three or four games. They've scored uh, about 30 points per game. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it has a lot to do with, with guys coming up back. Shaq has played well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Matty Jackson has done well. Jared's always a guy that goes out there and plays hard for us. But Matty's guy has kind of uh, got back to his old form after taking some time off with those injuries last year, and he's going to be a big part of what we're doing. So I'm glad he's playing well. And then... Of course, Oscar, who I'm moving to the starting lineup tonight to try to get him going a little bit. Not that Fifi hasn't played well, but you know maybe Fifi can give that second group a little bit more scoring and have Oscar uh, go out there in the beginning and hopefully with his athleticism and his rebounding, he can do a good job. Three-point shooting has also stepped up here in the last few games as well. Are you pleased with that? You mentioned off the top you you hit from the arc. Uh, well, you know what kind of hit and miss. Josh still is you know shooting the way that Josh does. Uh, he made a few shots. Uh, we have to continue to move the ball and, and not settle for the threes, but move it. You know, we've seen a lot of zone as of late, so we've got to make sure we try to attack the inside, get it to the paint, and then off the of drives or kickouts, then we can shoot a three and then continue to crash the board. So, uh, you know, three-point shooting is always going to be a big part of our game. I'd like to see our guys uh, do a better job of being consistent and making more shots. But your three-point defense has been phenomenal as well. Do you work on that? Is it getting out to those shooters? Is well, it we, our defense nature? overall yeah. has been really good. And, uh, you know, I t I, we don't really have an identity right now offensively. We're having a hard time scoring, uh, whether it's getting the free throw line or posting up or shooting. So our guys have really concentrated on being a good defensive team. And that has a lot to do with of getting out and running guys off the line, not making them put it on the floor, maybe taking mid-range jump shots instead of a, a wide open three. So our guys have focused on uh, running guys off the line. We're going to have to do that tonight. Although this team doesn't take a lot of threes, uh, they shoot a pretty good percentage. Yeah, sixth in the nation uh, against the three-point defense and also uh, first in a uh, number of maids again so uh, doing a great job defending the three matt jackson he stepped up last game your your thoughts about matt jackson uh you know i, I always say that matt's one of our smartest guys he's been here for four years he's a red shirt junior uh at six eight six nine he can really stretch the floor and when he shoots it it really puts a lot of pressure on the defense because he is such a good passer he's a good post player uh, he gets in the middle against zones and knows how to play and then defensively he's one of those guys that can guard a bunch of different uh, positions and can move his feet and he's just really smart so uh, I'm, I'm happy that he's back and feeling healthy and hopefully we can keep him healthy all the all year is that the key because he, he looks like he's playing with a lot more confidence on the court is it because he's he's finally healthy from yeah and it takes a while when you miss a whole year of basketball you can you can practice and shoot and do all that stuff but you need some game time and you need some repetition in game like situations and uh you know for me i don't want to put him out there at long stretches because as i said the injuries he's had mm -hmm. uh and back problems things like that but those things can come back so just trying to work him in gradually and uh, he's done a good job of that so um he's just starting to feel more comfortable did you scout the uh, longwood lancers a couple of nights ago or uh, see their game at asu i didn't they... i don't get the pac-12 network uh, that's a, well, that's, that's, another but that's another story five point but no i watched by the uh, I watched, sun devils yeah, I watched at the, the half you know, this, you know, Arizona State obviously very good, and this is a team Longwood that plays a lot of man, but against Arizona State they played all zone. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see what they do tonight. I, I expect them to come out and probably play zone uh, against us. So uh, a team that doesn't really turn you over a lot, they're going to play uh, a zone. They're going to press you, uh, press you a lot, but they really don't turn you over. We have to do a good job of getting out and rebounding. This is not a good rebounding team. We got to crash the boards, uh, both defensively and offensively. Uh, can't turn the ball over and just get good shots, and then defensively guard the three-point line well but overall is not look ahead and go out there and just play hard for 40 minutes all right coach good luck all right thank you head coach dan marley the head coach of the gc lopes as they close out their homestand tonight against the longwood lancers stay with us more of the lopes pregame show continues even though they are in the middle of a stretch of five games in 12 days the gcu basketball team is ready to celebrate the holidays we hear about their favorite christmas memories and gifts after we take this time out Come experience a stay-and-play destination in the heart of Phoenix during the holiday season. GCU Hotel is the perfect in-town getaway with beautiful amenities like the resort-style swimming pool, 
full service fitness center, and Canyon 49 Grill, serving up modern American cuisine. Hotel rates from $79 and tea times as low as $20. Book your stay and play getaway at gcuhotel.com today. the holiday cookies and the baking and the wrapping of the presents and grab that phone or hop by your computer and find us on social media. You can tweet or find us on Instagram using the hashtag Lopes Rising and your tweet just might appear at the bottom of our screen. So Havoc that are home for the holidays, alum, anyone out there enjoying this Lopes basketball game, let us know using that hashtag and you could be a part of our broadcast tonight in our broadcast is uh, very exciting tonight as it's our final one before the Christmas holiday. So we are in the Christmas spirit, thanks to Oppo Suits, sporting some of these things. And you'll see throughout the night, our crew has on their ugly sweaters. We're excited to share that with you. And hey, you can always put on your ugly sweater at home as well. And now we want to remind you that who else is in the holiday spirit? Well, the Lopes players, of course. They will be on the road this holiday season. But with their 8-3 record, you better believe they are on the nice list. And so we sat down with the players and asked them about some of their favorite holiday memories over the years and some of those memorable gifts they received as kids. Christmas at the Vaughn household, it's summer back home, so our big thing is we have our uh, gifts in the morning and then we go down to the beach as a family and spend the day there. Well, we always do fondue on Christmas Eve and then on Christmas Day, just a big meal, kind of hang out, relax, open presents, uh, just have a good time. Uh, my favorite Christmas memory growing up is probably playing in the Central Park, snowballing with my friends, going down the, uh, the mountain, the slides. Uh, it was good. Christmas in New York. My favorite Christmas memory growing up was the last Christmas I spent with my grandfather before he died was 2007. A uh, favorite Christmas memory with my family, we usually, we have family out in Colorado, so we would usually go out to um, my aunt and uncle, they had a ranch out there, so we'd go out there and, um, you know, we'd roast marshmallows, go, you know, snowmobile and do all that kind of stuff, so um, that was always my favorite Christmas memory growing up. The way we celebrate Christmas in Latvia is pretty much uh, like the same everybody it does, so you know, we open the gifts, spend some good time, good time with family, you know, and just have some fun times. My favorite Christmas memory was when I was 15 and my dad finally played me one-on-one -on -one <laughs> and I finally beat him. My favorite Christmas memory would have to be um, 1999. It snowed for once in my town. This is a real small town in the middle of nowhere where it never snows and it hasn't snowed since then. Oh, my favorite gift growing up was a Game Boy SP. <laughs> I was, uh, I think I was like maybe 10 or 11, and it was a gray Game Boy SP, and I remember when I got it, I was just freaked out, and I was super excited, so. Oh, and I also got a Mario Kart game cartridge with it, but it stopped working, because you, you know, you got to blow on it, so. It's all right, whatever. I think, uh, I, I don't like so much gifts. I just like to spend time and with, my, with my family and my relatives. I remember my brother and I, when we were when we were younger, we once got a, uh, a Nintendo 64, and that was one of my, our favorite gifts growing up. I think we um, played a lot of uh, Super Mario 64, and did all that kind of stuff. So that was one of my favorite games growing up, and one of my favorite presents growing up. My favorite Christmas gift growing up, I got a bike when I was about seven years old. My favorite Christmas gift growing up, uh, I got a car last year when I was 18, so it was pretty cool. <laughs> And my favorite Christmas gift, uh, I think I was like 10 years old when the Jordan Playoff 8s came out. Something special for y'all, if y'all don't even know. <laughs> special shoe right there. <laughs> favorite gift for Christmas was the new iPhone that just came out. It was like two years ago. I think, yeah, my parents got me a new phone, so I was really happy about it. 
favorite great gift growing up for Christmas would have been probably a boogie board because we used to go down and go for a surf and that was the first time I learned how to surf with my dad. My favorite gift probably was when I got a PlayStation. I was probably like fifth or sixth grade maybe. Uh, that was kind of like the first game system I think that I had. So I was pretty thrilled to say the least. Uh, that was kind of back when I played a lot of video games. So uh, that was definitely an exciting day. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas from the GCU basketball team. Tis the season for a little fun, as you heard the players. They were gamers as kids, from video games now to making it happen out on the basketball court. Well, we are still uh, having fun here, getting in the holiday spirit. Up next, he's a jolly old soul who brings good cheer to GCU fans everywhere. Now nah, we're not talking about Santa. We're talking about the Lopes insider, Paul Goro. He is up next. The senior sports writer joins us with, yes, you guessed it, an ugly sweater. Stay with us. Earning your RN to BSN degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. Finding your purpose takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience delivering our accredited RN to BSN program 100% online. Graduate in as few as 16 months learning from full-time practicing nurse faculty in small classes. Integrate your education with your faith and Christian worldview. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Christmas has come early for Nicole Powell's basketball team as the women have scored their third straight win today, taking uh, the game over Santa Clara. And up next, you can celebrate the new year by coming out here and supporting the GCU women's basketball team as the Lopes get some well-deserved rest after today's game, but then come out blazing on January 2nd when they face Arizona Christian at 6 p.m. at GCU Arena. Conference season starts on the 6th against Seattle. All right, welcome back to the Lopes Free Game Show here on Your View. Thunder, just one of the many here in GC Arena. Thunder Claws, I like that. Getting ready for the Christmas spirit and the holidays here. And I'm Kate Longworth. Welcome you to the Lopes Free Game Show. And we're, we're bright. You can't miss us. And I hopefully have some bright things to say to Paul Coro joining me in his very festive sweater. I love it. Looking good. And uh, not only do you know how to pick out a great outfit for the holidays, but as the Lopes Insider, you know a lot, obviously, about GCU sports. So let's talk about the men's basketball team. Already, they um, were picked preseason as the WAC favorite for the number one spot. But they're leading the conference in a lot of different categories, too. What have you seen so far? Yeah, I think there's a couple things that stand out. Obviously, nationally, they're doing some really good things. Uh, but defensively, I think when you concentrate on the WAC, you really get a perspective of how strong they've been. They're sixth nationally in scoring defense, but that's obviously best in the WAC. They've been one of the best teams in the nation on three-point field goal defense. That percentage, 26.8%. Not only that, but they've given up the fewest threes in the nation. Uh, teams are only hitting three or less than four threes a game against them. And I think what gets lost a lot of times is this, this the turnover ratio. You know, a lot of times that starts with Casey Benson at the top of games, really setting other guys up. But the whole team has been uh, passing the ball well, especially in recent games, and getting those turnovers down from uh, those uh, problems early in the season. Right, and we uh, talk about this team just kind of maturing throughout the season, and they'll really learn that when they hit the road over the holidays. They won't be celebrating necessarily with their families, but they will be celebrating with their teammates, trying to get some victories out on the road. How do you see these next few games shaping up Louisville, Illinois, and sandwiched between that, that Las Vegas neutral side game? Yeah, it's a tough slate, uh, especially because they're going to be on the road a great deal. They'll they'll take off tonight and go to Louisville for that big game Saturday. Uh, but then they'll go straight to Las Vegas after that because they have the game with Morgan State there at the Orleans Arena, which is the site of the WAC basketball tournament. It'll right. give them a little perspective on how to play there. But it's also a time just to lock in on basketball. The guys commented this week that it's been good just to focus on basketball. Finals are behind them. They don't have to worry about getting up for classes. Uh, they're really locked in on this stretch. And, 
gearing up for whack play. And uh, these types of opponents will really get them there. Uh, not only, you know, Longwood played ASU Tuffy the other night. You got Louisville, who's just outside the top 25 in the nation. Uh, Illinois is a power five school. So all these games are going to get them ready, and they'll be together. Uh, you know, the international guys don't mind because right. they weren't going to get to go home anyway. So uh, they'll spend Christmas together in Vegas and have some bonding. Yeah, the, the chemistry off the court hopefully translates onto the court. The women's side, they are getting a little bit of a break, but Nicole Powell's team beat Santa Clara today, as we mentioned, and now they're riding a three-game winning streak. What have you seen from them in their latest game? Yeah, they found some uh, some more scores to step up as the season's gone along, but they went to their trusty one at the end of today's game. Bree Mobley uh, hit a jumper with 14 or with 29 seconds to go in the game. Uh, she's got this great mid-range game, and they uh, Nicole Powell drew up a great play that they hadn't used all game. She put it on Santa Clara at the end. They really struggled a little bit against Santa Clara's zone. She split in there and hit it, and then Jessica Gajusi got a block uh, to save the win. Now they got three wins, some time off. They'll have one more uh, game that you mentioned against Arizona Christian before they go in the WAC. And take me through some of the latest articles you've been working on. I know we can find them online, but direct people to this story because it's very clever. Much new about <laughs> Yeah, P.P. Adu is, uh, I think he's a crowd favorite. I think people love his name, P.P. Yeah. more than ever. Uh, if they only knew his first name was Harold. <laughs> not, <laughs> not as fun. Not quite as exciting, but uh, uh, P.P. Adu, uh, we talked the other day, you know, he, he was born in Ghana and moved to Finland when he was five. It kind of explains his background a little bit. He speaks three languages fluently, knows a couple of others. He wants to mess around now with French and Russian since he's bored with the other three. Uh, but P.P.'s started the last four games uh, you know he may not continue there for the rest of the season I think uh, coach Marley wants to get Oscar Pereira back into the fold but he has been hitting his shot lately he gives him a lot defensively because he's got that 610 wingspan that just eats up a lot of court space well now I'm just gonna if he was able to change his name I'm just gonna call you Paul Pee Coro that'll help get the crowd behind you I mean it makes Pee popular I don't I don't think it has anything to do with his basketball skills too right, right. Anyway, Paul Coro joining us. Thank you so much. There's Thunderclaws and the crowd getting ready here for the Lopes game. And when we come back, we're going to take a quick trip around the conference to see what the competition looks like. We'll be right back. Hey, you. Are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in. We're going on an adventure. In Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to experience. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you can earn your degree in fewer than four years and explore everything Arizona has to offer. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. Christmas from Grand Canyon University. Welcome back. Well, next week, GCU playing at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, getting a little preview of where the WAC tournament will take place in March. So let's take a look at the competition. Some games this weekend on Friday, UTRGV is up at Oklahoma State, South Dakota State is at Kansas City, and Utah Valley at Sam Houston, as well as Davidson at New Mexico State. And I also, you saw from the women's side, the Lopes did take the victory earlier this afternoon against Santa Clara and more games this week. And we'll keep you updated uh, throughout our broadcast, what's going on through the NCAA landscape. But right now, we focus in on a great holiday treat. Lopes basketball against the Longwood Lancers. It's up next. Grab your snacks, and Barry and Scott will be right back here with the call. Companies Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. 
One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I presented to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the door mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a door mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype. And we came up with the mattresses that we have now. And after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. You can see the community thriving along with GCU. And just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope, and I, and I tell it to everyone, like, go to GCU, Lope sub. I'm very, very proud. Defensive end, really pounded. Uh, Matt, Mississippi Valley State, and everybody got to play. And the bench was phenomenal. Matt Jackson coming off the pine, knocking down his first three threes, got on the board with the five rebounds, was really moving good offensively and defensively. I like the way this young man has really approached this season, continues to warm up as we enter whack play. And the three-point shooting, including the help from Matt Jackson, 40.7% after scuffling for the last three or four games. Yeah, they're doing a much better job now. They're not trying to go one-on-one -on -one to create their threes. They're getting penetration and pitches, flare screens. Guys still are screening down there, coming off of double screens, getting clean looks at the basket, plenty of time to set their feet, lock their shoulders, and eye the shot. Longwood Lancers come in three and nine on the season. They're led by their redshirt senior guard, number two, B.K. Ash. Go watch B.K. Ash. This kid's going for 36 minutes in, uh, a game over the last four games. He had 14 points at ASU, knocked down three triples. He can play. He's a transfer from Mount St. Mary's. Has over 1,000 points in his career. Put a, put a number uh, on his back or uh, a target wherever he goes. Someone better follow close behind. All right, let's get this thing tipped off. We'll send it over to the public address announcer, Paul DeNuzer, with our prayer and our national anthem. Brian University Arena for Christmas night and tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Lancers of Longwood University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Katie Wood, a freshman majoring in business and a member of the GCU Dancers. Let's bow our heads. Thank you for this day, God, and thank you for the gift of basketball. Please place a hand of protection over all of the athletes tonight and remind them that everything we do is for you. It's in your name that we pray, amen. Thank you, Katie. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by our very own Thundering Herd pep band under the direction of Paul Cook. Thank you. Great job by the Thundering Herd Pep Band in our national anthem as the Longwood Lancers come in overall three and nine, a 95-61 loss at ASU on Tuesday. Their head coach is Jason G. He's in his fifth season. 
Here is his starting five. BK Ash, Camille Chapman, Deshaun Smith, Demarion Jeter, and Chris Shields. Yeah, we're going to keep an eye on Chapman. He's a 6'185 185-pound freshman guard, but he doesn't play like a freshman. He's already in mid-season form. He had 14 points before he played ASU. Then he went off for his career high, 16 points again at ASU. He knocked down five triples in that game and pulled down five Rodmans. Associate head coach is Jake Loon. The assistant coach is Dr. Ron Bradley and Cody Anderson. Time now to introduce you to GCU. Dan Marley's starting five, Casey Benson, Oscar Freyer, Josh Braun, Alessandra Labor, and Keontae Burton. Yeah, big Italian. We're going to pop him tonight because this kid has been on fire his last two games. Really pulling a good job out there for Coach Marley in that back line of that defense. Also scoring that basketball, eight and a half points per game, pulling down four boards, but it's his gritty play that's earned him a spot in that starting lineup. Dan Marley in his fifth season as head coach. The associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistant coaches are Chris Brevelone and TJ Benson. Director of basketball operations is Luke Della Riva. The special assistant to the head coach is Brendan Sabian. And the graduate assistant is Johnny Hill. Globes coming off a 71-38 win on Monday night against Mississippi Valley State. Next up, Saturday, 11 a.m. local time at Louisville against the Cardinals. But tonight, they close out their homestand against the Longwood Lancers of the Big South Conference. Jack Carr gets the uh, honors in the middle. They don't want to mix that up. Always in the center circle. Good crowd on hand here on employee appreciation night, Christmas party. Scott, your keys to the game. Well, we went with a holiday theme with these jackets, oh, yeah, so it had to, to go with a holiday song theme. So Frosty the Snowman, oh, these are the one. top three point shooting defenses in the country. Longwood, 29%, GCU, 27%. What's going to give them? So that's a story to watch. They come all ye faithful. There are gifts if you dare come inside the paint. Those must go inside and win the battle of points in the paint tonight. And then do you hear what I hear? This GCU team has been making national noise for years now. And it's time to really turn up the volume. Get it started tonight. Don't look past this team to the 23rd against Louisville and the 30th against Illinois. Take care of business tonight and then go make some noise on the road. Proud to remain on its feet until the Lopes hit their opening bucket. Freyer against Jeter. We are underway. Oscar back to Keontae and he hands it off to Casey Benson. Benson to his left, triple hand off to Braun. Braun out front. Bounce pass, Vernon. Leaves it there for Freyer, drives up high, goes right hand on the glass. Take a seat if you win. Wow, well that was nice. You talk about going inside, it's Oscar Freyer back in that starting lineup, pounding it right to the uh, middle of the basket. Ash, leaves it there for Shields. Careful. Back to Ash, 13.7 points per game average. 14 points against ASU. Driving into the paint. Lost the handle, trying to keep it back in. Benson up to Freyer. Look out. Oh, knocked away. Oh, I think Freyer nice. is getting ready to yeah. take off. And he got a uh, false start right before the launch pad ignition sequence. Abort. Oh, hey, 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 
play of that one. Nice pitch ahead. Casey Pinson loves that pitch ahead. Rarest getting ready to take off. Might have been a little wrist. Officials <laughs> maybe not in the greatest position to catch that one. Smith, Deshaun Smith to his right. BK Ash. Redshirt senior from Washington, D.C. A long range shot from Smith. Connects. Uh, you move that basketball from one side of the floor to the other. It certainly opens up the weak side long ball. Labor swarm there. Bounce pass to Benson. Down off the wing. Braun leaves it for Casey. Clean catch. Braun's got an open look for three. Bam! Oh, some miscommunication in the Longwood defense. Nobody out on that right wing to protect. Excuse me, the left wing. And they left one of the best three-point shooters in GCU history wide open. Jeter to his right, beyond the arc. Chapman, Smith, Ash trying to move on Benson. Bounce pass back out. Smith kicked out for three. Off the mark, heavy by Chris Shields. How about Keontae Vernon coming out to the three-point line to challenge that shot? Shields, 23% from the arc. Labor wants three. He gets it! You know, Labor was one of the first floats on the floor after the ladies game, which they won on a last second shot by Bree Mobley. Working on that long ball. Good to see him knock that first one in. That'll give him some confidence the rest of the game. Congratulations to the women's squad with a big win over Santa Clara this afternoon right here at GCU Arena. Freyer in the corner. He'll look for three. Heavy. Big rebound. Picked up. And knocked off by Chapman Keontae Vernon from behind. How about that? Yeah, he's a little jimpy. Something happened to Vernon when he tried no. to go for that last offensive rebound. And he got another oh, one. Oh, there's a Christmas gift early. Benson right handed in. Oh, Keontae he's Vernon, grimacing. he's toughening it out, but he made a spectacular offensive rebound and then a good bounce pass to the cutting Benson for the reverse layup. They don't run for the Lopes. in the corner. Bounce pass inside, looking for Jeter. Back out. The three by Chapman off the mark. Turn around. Missed by Shields. Seven point Lopes lead early on here in Phoenix. Benson weaving. Careful. Yikes. Vernon. Sounds like one of those hockey plays. <laughs> Swung it around, got it underneath the net, and threw it back out top, and set it up again. Well, foul committed. Who's going to be on it? Shields. Go back to uh, the big Italian out there from behind the arc. Nice pass out of the corner. And then Keontae first snatches that offensive rebound. Like, give me that candy, son. And then bounces it right over to a cutting Benson between two Longwood defenders. Biggs came to play tonight. Braun for three. Heavy. Rebound, Vernon. Fresh 30 on the shot clock. How many offensive rebounds and deflections does Vernon have here in the first four minutes? I've counted four. Looks like he's fought through that injury. Benson with a floater. Heavy. Pulled down by BK Ash. His drive goes high. Not there. Vernon's there to handle it. Leaves it for Freyer. Freyer on the move. Freyer cuts in. Loses it. Benson's there, puts it back. Well, he should have got a whistle there, but Benson didn't give up on the play, thinking he was going to get the layup, hustling down the floor. Got himself an extra bucket. Burn it at the floor, underneath the bucket. Yeah, Labor stole tonight. They are letting the play contact all over the place. The officials let him go. Spencer Franklin denied. Burn it, put it in. Sweet feed. Oh my gosh, I could have came, I could have slapped Casey Benson on the butt. He was that close to us at half court when he delivered a strike right over the top of the defense. Took the lid off the top of the D. Smith driving. Travel on Smith. John Smith. The Lopes doing their darn thing on the defensive end once again. Just three points for Longwood. Timeout on the floor, 15-01. GCU has come to play. They lead it 14-3. Let's send it over to Kate Longwood. 
All right, guys, whether you're dashing through the snow or decking the halls, or even if you're trying to have a silent night, somehow music finds a way to bring you spirit over the holiday season. And we found out it's the same for these GCU basketball players. Not only do they have game on the court, but apparently they can also carry a tune, if you will. Well, if we're going like traditional, I really like Hark the Herald Angels Sing, but if we're going like contemporary, I kind of low-key listen to Justin, Justin Bieber's Christmas album a lot, so kind of bump that every now and then, you know. I don't have exactly one, but I'll listen to Mariah Carey as she uh, has on his uh, Android phone, and Michael Buble. I recommend not Mariah Carey. I don't know what Jared's talking about. My favorite Christmas song is DMX, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Do yourselves a favor and check it out. It's amazing. It's a lot of what, you know, so you go ahead and check that out. My favorite Christmas song, um, well, I guess we'll, we'll go with artists. I, I always liked the Frank Sinatra um, Christmas songs. I thought those were always good. It made it really feel like Christmas. And so um, I think those really get me in the Christmas spirit, man. Yeah. Uh, my favorite Christmas song is Jingle Bells. <laughs> Your turn. My favorite song would have to be This Christmas by Chris Brown. And my favorite Christmas song is also Jingle Bell. Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle All The Way. That's all you get, that's all you get. A little sample, a little sample. Well guys, uh, pretty good, but maybe keep your day job. Meanwhile, if you're around what? Casey Benson, I'm guessing he's gonna want you to sing because Casey said he can really listen to Christmas music all year long. Guys, I'm a fan of Baby It's Gold Outside and of course, All I Want For Christmas. What about you guys? Is it DMX? No. No, <laughs> no. What? what? I don't know what he was talking about. Uh, Little Drummer Boy, that's a classic in uh, Nat King Cole. Chestnuts oh, roasting on an open My fire. Dad's favorite. Jack oh, What a voice, something. Nat King Cole. Bing Crosby, a little White Christmas. Oh, yeah. Or maybe a little Elvis, blue, 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 blue Christmas. Santa Baby, how would you like that one, Santa Baby? Yeah, that's fun. I always like that one. We get back to action. Braun, Fifi, Benson, back over to Adu in the game. Braun off the wing, looks inside, bounce pass, Labor trying to pick it up. Oh, he swarmed down there. Looked out. Swarmed a little too hard. Yes, get a he foul was. down there. And, no, I think it was on uh, 24. Jeter and uh, you know, Coach Marley said that he thought the Longwood would go to a zone defense at times against them tonight. And they did when they forced the turnover. And then Josh Braun trying to get it back. Whether he bumped knees uh, with Franklin trying to get that ball back. Braun's first. One more time here. Both two guys going in different directions there, and you see the right knee on right knee. Those are the ones that stink. Back. Back out. Franklin to his right. Cintron at the game for the Longwood Lancer. Cintron leads it inside, kicks back out. Spencer Franklin leads for BKI. Long distance over to Jashawn Smith. Franklin looks inside. Labor picked it off. Nice job. Where to go? Yeah, they weren't going to get that shot off regardless. The 30-second shot was about the shot clock was about to blow up on him. Good job by Italian Stallion, staying nice and high, getting that deflection slash steal. Benson left side. They do inside to Labor. Back over to Fifi. He wants three. He gets it. That's it. You know, all that penetration side to side works good against his own defense, but what works best is when you get it inside below the free throw line, claps the D, find the shooter on the perimeter. 15-0 run for the Lopes, it has come to an end. Wow, it was over five minutes and 12 seconds, 0 for 7 from the field, and they put an end to it finally. 17 to 5 Lopes. Wow, Fifi a do! Ooh, a little heat check that time. Fifi says, I'll get him out of that zone defense, coach. Brings it up near side. Trying to weave around Benson. It looks like Casey's going to be called for his first personal foul. Call call number 11, Casey Benson. First personal, second team foul. His ball game for the Lopes, number five. Matt One Jackson. more time. 
You just see that hand down, man down. You're gonna get off me six feet. I'm gonna knock it in from 18. Matt Jackson in the game for Alessandra Labor. Sean Smith, he's got at least one three-pointer in eight straight games. For the Lancers, BK Ash stopping. Big right hand, short. Rebound ends up in Cintron's hand. Jordan Cintron from the Bronx. Ash, far side. Franklin pulls back, trying to move on Braun. Well, that's gonna be the second on Braun. And Give Franklin a lot of credit for taking the fight right to the barrel, chest and on. Jared Martin's gonna check in. He even lost his rubber band on his ponytail. He had to redo that up. They were in there banging bodies. Franklin at the line, eight of 14, 57%. Junior from Fort Worth, Texas. Broad checks out. Jared Martin. Jared Martin. Jamil Chapman's going to come into the game. Chris Shields checks back in. For the Lancer. Jackson and Jared Martin. Those are the guys that made a really big change in the complexion of the game against Mississippi Valley State. And you already can see that uh, a dude's been out here knocking down a couple threes. Up high, oh my goodness! Oh, they love that cross court pass over the top of the defense. They seal that outside defender on the zone, lock him out. He's got no place to get back to the basket. And Fifi and Duke slammed it home with two hands. Oh, nice crossover move down low. Fouls committed. Oh, travel down there. Yeah, they stayed long on that baseline and caused them to shuffle those feet. But one more time, you get the cross screen, which you couldn't quite see there. Lock them in there. And then uh, throw the ball right up over the top of the defense. I think that was Jared Martin delivering that pass. Wonderful pass over the top of the D. Shakar in. Beefy. Right there by Cintron. Beefy to the left. Comes back. In. Oh, look how Beefy's on fire. Beefy is on fire. A, per a perfect four for four. He's done it with two triples, the slam dunk, and then showing off his mid-range game. So he is in Santa's bag of tricks right now. BK Ash. Lumberg's at the scorer's table. Long distance shot. Missed off the mark by Camille Chapman. Left there for Matt Jackson for three. Oh, the presents are coming early. Well, that was nice because he took the time. Matt Jackson running the floor after getting the rebound. Call that kind of a secondary break. The first layup is not there. See Matt Jackson sprint right to his spot on the floor. He waits for him, spoon feeds one right over to him, and then kaboom! Matt Jackson knocking it down. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. 25-2 run for the Lopes. They lead it 27-5, 11-10 to go, opening half. Keep it right here on your view. The Grand Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, and a 22,000 square foot clubhouse. The Lope House Restaurant, serving modern American cuisine, is open to the public seven days a week. Come experience the best golf and dining destination in the heart of Phoenix. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. 
Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Just over 11 minutes to go, and tonight the Lopes showcasing their offense with a 27-5 lead. But GCU held their last opponent, Mississippi Valley State, to just 38 points on Monday night. That was the lowest total in GCU Division I history. But it's really no surprise when you look at these conference stats. Right now, GCU on top of it when it comes to defense. Showing off that D with their scoring defense, field goal defense, three-point field goal defense, 26.8%. And they have ranked in the country six in scoring defense as well as in three-point defense, holding opponents to just 26.8% from beyond the arc. Really, guys, they've gone out there. Dan has preached it all year long. Showcase that D and let the shots fall after that, and they've been doing just that. They have indeed. Looking sharp here tonight, 10 to 2, outscoring the Lancers in the paint. The bench scoring 13 to nothing in favor of GCU. Fast break points, 8 zip GCU. All Grand Canyon here, 27 to 5 early on over Longwood. Back out. The three attempt by Chapman off the mark. Shaq Carr brings it up. Leaves it there. Jackson pulls back down. Okay, Ash. Neil Chapman are scoreless here early on for Longwood. They only have five points. Here's the cheater and three for Smith. Lumbers. Jackson. He'll try for three. Heavy. Big rebound. The Lancers fighting after it. He knocked out of bounds and Shields went after it. Chapman and Unfortunately for Longwood, they knock it out, and then Lopes will have a fresh 30 here on the inbound from Martin. Coach G there in his fifth season, a 29-year coaching veteran, formerly an associate head coach at Cleveland State, St. Bonaventure in New York at Ohio, assistant coach at Youngstown State. Underneath Jackson, the wonder from down under. Matt Jackson has come to play once again, and that was just a simple Sometimes when you inbound the ball, you are the most dangerous man on the floor. They forget about you, and Matt Jackson just inbounded and stepped right towards the basket and got an easy bucket. Easiest one he'll see all season. Oh, Shields having some issues with the ball here for Longwood. BK Ash. He's driving, loses it. Lopes ball. Now they're just discombobulated on the offensive end, and the Lopes having a lot to do with that. Far near side, Martin. Martin comes over, takes it. Looking back for instruction from the coach Marley. Car drives left handed in, open lane. They like that one. Just a one five, a one five, one four flat. They bring the five man up high to set the high screen. Just let the, the point guard go either direction he wants to go. Now they force a turnover. Jackson. Fifi pulls down, bounce pass. Quickly, Martin for three. Good! Oh my goodness! They are hitting it all cylinders, and that's the way you want to break the work right there. Get it down to the baseline, swing it around the horn. Extra pass, the unselfish pass by Mike Jackson. Gives it right back to Jared Martin, who had fed him the play before. Sean Smith. <laughs> oh, Smith. He raised his finger after he knocked down that shot to his mouth as to say, shh, be quiet to, really? the, to the fans. But oh I don't think he realizes it's blown out to a 34 to 7 disadvantage for Longwood. <laughs> I don't think Six this crowd seven. is going to be quiet anytime soon. Oh my goodness! 7 of 11 from the yard! Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. I'll tell you, Jared Martin's just showing off for his mama, who's in the crowd, came over and spoke to us before the game. He is on fire. Oh, they're going to eat good over the holidays. Yeah, lamb chops, right? Oh. Oh, the drive. How did Martin play as a charge? He moved his feet down there, got his right foot on that baseline. Look at Shaq Carr one more time. He just goes away from the screen, catches the defender, gousing. And he's just so doggone quick. He goes the other way with Jim Jared Martin, boy, I'll tell you what. He is being aggressive tonight. Knocked down two three-point shots in a row. There's, there's, a, Martin. there's this Martin right there checking out the action. Defeated Matt Jackson again from the corner. 
Rebound picked up by Chapman. After BK Ash. Hands it off to Jeter. Centron. Hide by Jackson. Now pass inside. Jeter trying to move on Blumbergs. Quite the move that time. I thought Jeter was off balance, but somehow he was able to fight that ball in with his left hand after getting his contact down here by the young freshman. He initiates the contact. A nice job taking it right to the chest of the shot block. VPA new 10 points in the game has been perfect from the field. As many Lopes players have been from the field here tonight, but he's uh, he's just playing cool and confident. Right. Well, you know, he got that confidence in that starting lineup. Coach Marley said, "Let me put you back on the bench because we need an additional pop off of that bench." And boy, has he responded! Doesn't hang his head at all. Comes down and knocks down a couple threes. That's a heat check one right there from deep. Knocks that one down. And I love the high handoff. He's showing his hops off right before the holidays, and then this one here, nice little move to the baseline, snatch it back. Knocked down the mid-range jump shot. So Fifi Adu, Matt Jackson, Jared Martin, all those cats off the bench ready to play. Head coach Dan Marley and the GCU men's basketball team hitting the road for the first of four straight games starting Saturday when the Lopes travel to Louisville to take on the Cardinals. Louisville under their new head coach David Padgett has put together a nine and two start. Their two losses to top 25 programs. Tip off set for 11 a.m. Arizona time. Tune into the Fanatic, 1580 AM, 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM. Over if you're over in the East Valley, Michael Botter, Tom Kuiper will have all the action for you on the Fanatic. The Lopes are playing like Fanatics, 32 to two run. Their bench is outscoring the Lancers, 23 to nothing. Hey, you got about a getaway game. You're gonna go on the road tonight, get out of town, and go up to Louisville, probably go to Chicago. This is the kind of good feel-good game that you want here. We only seven, we got, still got seven minutes and 28 seconds left to go on this game. They put 37 points up on the board. They had a season high in points last game versus Mississippi Valley State. And I think they're gonna add to that this on this game tonight because right now the ball movement is good, the defense is solid, it's creating opportunities on the offensive end. That last pass by Delarian and Jeter is good. He'll shoot one. Here's Bucket counter. 63% from the line. Blumberg pulls it down. 37-9. Lopes on top of the Lancers. Yeah, see, I, I saw a good performance coming out of these Lopes, but I had no idea it would be this strong here in this opening half. It was a five-point game in the opening half in Tempe. Second half, completely different story. Similar to what we're seeing here in the opening half. Well, those Lancers, they, they got there in the middle of a four out of five game uh, roadie road trip. So they're going to have to figure out a way. You know, who, who, a lot of time left in this game, obviously. But more importantly, they got to figure out a way to get their offense clicking. They got a lot of one on one play right now. Rumble, second elbow, set the free throw line. Sprayer in for Fifi. Got a car for Christmas last year. You hear that? Got a car. Awesome. Oh, Favorite wow. Christmas gift. You got a car, right? I got a car. Everybody got a car. You didn't get a car? Martin. Ryan Centron. Little handoff there for Jeter. Bounce pass, BK Ash. Ash by Jackson. Ash Wayne. Fire. They're just doing a really good job moving their feet. I don't know, maybe whatever happened that Boise State game, maybe they knew they threw one away and should have, could have, would have won that one. And they came back here to the, uh, the lab and really put in some work on the defensive end and are taking pride in their one-on-one -on -one defense. Look at Shaq Carr. Reached in, swatted it over to Freyer. Jared Martin's going to go for three. Off the mark. Coming in was Jackson, but not enough. Here come the Lancers. 
Approaching six and a half to go, opening half. You like Jared Martin taking that shot? I, I, so I do. I do. Just because he's hit two. And sometimes okay. I want to say he's too tentative on taking shots. When he's hot like that, he got a clean look to three. I like it. Going to step it up. Seven of 20 from the arc coming in. Freyer just inside the arc. Heavy. Nobody home for the rebound. BK Ash. Tempo slowing down a bit. Bounce pass over to Smith. Oh, that went over the top. Turnover for the Lancers. Well, I believe that's three turnovers in a row for the Lancers. I mean, as a as a coaching staff, there's a coach over there charting how many consecutive times that they can get stops. And they always say you want to get at least four stops every half. Where you, excuse me, where you get three stops in a row. You want that four times every half. And the more you can string together after that, who would have known you get three turnovers in a row? Got to get multiple stops when you're a good defensive team. Ouch. Man, what spot out there on the floor? Chapman, oh! Blumberg's came back. Good effort. Well, I think Blumberg knew that that was going to be goaltending, but he said, I just ran 75 feet like yeah. a white blur down the floor. And I'm going to go ahead and knock this one off the glass anyway. 25 to goose egg on bench points. 26 turnovers against ASU to the Lancers half, 10 in this game. Martin, there you go again for three. Far, to get the rebound, Freyer. I got no problem with Jared Martin shooting the ball 10 times a game. Okay, give it to him again. Let's go, hit it. I threw it too high, way up Come over on. his head. Got to get him right in the Here we go. shooting pocket. Plenty of time, give it to him. Bounce pass inside, Laver's going to turn around. That's off the mark. Ooh, look at him, a little sloppy with the ball down on the ground. They're calling a foul or a timeout. I'm not sure which they just... Timeout. Ooh, look at the coach Looking coming out on the timeout. floor. 20 second timeout, long one. That was a nice wow. job there. It was Lavers that kind of poked that ball and make it loose on the floor and forced the Longwood player there to take the timeout. Well, Coach G is fired up. Ran out on the field, uh, the court there, and showing them where to stand. Well, Oxygen on the board there. Yeah, and he got some guys that are leaking down the floor, and not getting to the spots where the bigs would be able to find their outlets. And, that caused that uh, action underneath there. So he's, he doesn't want his team getting sloppy here tonight. 39-11, to go. Longwood University Lancers from Farmville, Virginia, about 65 miles west of Richmond, Virginia. By Appomattox. South surrendered to the north. Did you know that? I did not know that. I learned a little yep. U.S. history. Appreciate that. Sure. I've been to Rich Amazing one. I Stuff played the Spiders. When Rich tells me my <laughs> Ash inside. Back up. Smith. Ash goes back. Three, two. They better get a shot off. Ash, floater underneath. Oh, goodness gracious. Right in the boat. He's so quick. Uh, he sees from a standstill to a burst of speed. One of the quickest guys we've seen out here on, on this GCU arena floor. Four of their last four are the Lancers. They pick that one off. A little momentum swing here with 4.18 and counting to go in the opening half. Ash. Loader, good. DK Ash. Marley wants a timeout. He is just as fired up as G was with her last timeout. Well, BK Ash, he got off to a fast start in that game on Tuesday night. He dropped in nine of their first 13 points, had him off and rolling. So Coach Marley doesn't want a repeat of that. He gets a quick TO. 6 0 run for the Lancers. They trail 39 15. Timeout on the court, 4 10 to go. Opening half. Keep it right here on your view. It's that time again. Time to be thankful. Time to be with loved ones. Family Christmas and family traditions. Now's the time to make room for what's really important. The years go by fast and the holidays even faster. 
This is your season. Seize it. GCU's online degree program puts you first, so you can make the most of your time. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. I'm Dominique. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. When they say find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. All right, well, this is the season. You and your family probably have your own Christmas traditions, but we tried to check in on some of the Lopes players who were born overseas to see what their holiday tradition is. Labor said that the season lasts for three weeks growing up for him, and children would wait until January 6th, the epiphany to open presents, and they were delivered by a kind but ugly witch. Meanwhile, Roberts Blumberg's, well, he is liking the desert holidays because back home for him, it is cold. Gets to negative 20 around the holidays. And for our Aussies, well, they said it's summertime at Christmas, so they love to surf and boogie board after opening presents. Well, that would be a nice Christmas. It's so cold about 20 below. I grew up in that my whole, my whole childhood. Minnesota like that, huh? Uh, on the number three, Chapman. Boogie board sounds fun, though. And uh, guys, Fifi, he's from Finland, and they believe that Santa Claus, or Father Christmas, actually lives in a part of Finland called Lapland. That's north of the Arctic Circle. Oh, yeah. And meanwhile, their main meal at Christmas is a salty fish. It's a loot fish, not oh, noodles fish. related. And also a leg of pork, which is served with mashed potatoes. Dessert is bring me a little rice pudding. I think they brought that to fish Minnesota. Fish soaked fish? in lime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're not. You're not going for it. Disgusting. Uh, nah. Little. Yeah. Braun for three. Ooh, off the mark. Pulled down by the Lancer. Well, it's got a little chilly. Yeah, they <laughs> got that 37 yeah. points and they left the door open. Just two points in about the last four minutes for the Lopes. Back out, Franklin. Chapman, Neil Chapman. Bounce pass inside. Oh, he's going across the court. And Braun. See, that's a nice play. Out. That that play right there just shows you how smart a basketball player Josh Braun is. He jumps to get the ball, but realizes he doesn't have a clear teammate to pass it to, so decides to just carry the ball out of bounds with him, oh, yeah. rather than give it to a Longwood player that might score an easy two. Oh, look what happened, too. Foul called. Foul called on the Lancers, number three, Camille Chapman. Yeah, as a result, you get the stop that you were looking for. So, heady play for all you young hoopers out there. Learn from that. Never save the ball under your own basket unless you can clearly find a teammate to throw it to. Second on Chapman. Benson. Wrong. For three. Not there, rebound, oh, player was there, Vernon was ready to pick it up and knocked out of bounds. The drought continues. Oh, for the last seven from the field, four minutes, 12 seconds for the Lopes. They lead it still 39-15. Yeah, I thought they were headed to a 55, maybe yeah. a 60 point half, but Longwood's wow. come out and played some strong defense and Oscar Freire, like a bullet, runs right through the left shoulder. The, sh the three-point shooter. That's gonna be three, three throws. It's going to be third down and long. Look at that there, unnecessary. Oh, yeah, he, he got a piece of the ball, but then collided through the uh, the off shooting hand. Got up the challenge, you just don't want the foul. Chapman 77% coming in from the free throw line. Sixteen points, three steals against ASU. Yeah, career high sixteen for him. He's gotten that start. He got a couple starters out for Longwood, the top scorer. So he got his start a couple games ago, and he's been making the most of his time. Went for double figures for fourteen prior to his game against ASU, where he set that career high. They do in for Braun. 
The road started 7 of 11 from the arc. They are 0 for their last five from the three point strike. 9 0 run for the Lancers. Vernon. Far side over to Fifi Adu. Benson. 20 on the shot clock. Benson. Eyed by Jeter. Fifi. Vernon. Benson inside. Labor. Labor trying to move on Franklin. Ash came in, and I think BK is going to be called for a foul. Yeah, that's going to be a one on one situation. The young freshman is going to go to the line. I like the way he took his time down there on that block and surveys the defense. Bang with the left shoulder, a little two dribble deal, and handles that ball, gets the foul. That's tough when you got a bad uh, digit. I think it's his thumb on his right hand has been heavily bandaged, and I think he's got a couple fingers taped on his left hand. So. Tough when guys are coming down there, cracking you on your bad digits. Oh, rings out for Alessandro, 78% free throw shooter. Matt Jackson over to the scorer's table. Cheater, turning on labor. In the corner, Franklin. Franklin driving into the paint, stops, turns. Off the mark, Benson's there. Benson, no help, looks for three, heavy. Labor coming in. Oh, gets picked off, knocked out of bounds. Be careful. Get the ball, get the ball. They get to keep that ball and go through the stands. No, they never it. see that. They give it back. Why is that? In Major League football, Baseball, yeah. the ball goes in the stands. They get to keep it. Arena football? What about, what about NFL? Yeah, you can keep it. Keep it in the NFL? Yeah. I'll tell you, college, college and uh, NBA, they got to get with it. Like a souvenir. Benson, underhand, swatted away. Ooh. That's a good sportsmanship. He swatted yeah. away, kind of knocked him down. Russ has been letting him play, and he picks him back up. <laughs> Cheater just over there, just picks Benson back up, says, hey, I'll see you here next time. Hey, the drought's continuing, though, for the Lopes. Look at the move by Ash around Matt Jackson. Yeah. How about oh, that? Matt goodness. Jackson, Oscar Frere, everybody got a piece of him that time. Ash is heating up. Ash got six points now. Fifi. Matt, all day. Thank you. No help, but it put an end to a long drought. Uh, like uh, five and a half minutes. Or so. Iron so kind. That ball hit that back rim and it bounced all the way to the top of the backboard before falling back in. You don't see that too often. Ash back out. Cintron to his right. Quickly, Smith in the corner takes it back from Franklin. Turn, short, got a hand on it. Did Vernon. That's a tough shot. That's one of those ones you said, okay, listen, I made a nice cut. Wanted to get to the back. He lost the ball, but instead of just saying, reset it, let me get it back to a teammate, he just started to make a tough situation tougher by shooting a fadeaway with two guys on him. Benson letting that ball roll up, saving some time. Clock doesn't start. Frere, quickly, that's back out. Fifi pulls down from three, jumps inside the arc. Blind pass over to Jackson, really tight. Vernon's going to pick it up. Fifi, for three. Oh, it's short. Vernon and well, Frere back out for Benson. Fresh 30 on the clock. There's 26 counting on the game clock. 42-20 is the lead for GCU. Yeah, they Closing out the opening half. They got a chance to play for the last shot. If they took off, shut off the uh, shot clock. 13, 12, 11, Benson. He's got a move. Benson, seven. Oh, man, into by Franklin. Whoa. Foul ball to the Lancers, number 13, Spencer Franklin. First personal. Casey trying to get his wits about him as he took that shiver from Franklin. Yeah, Shrake's a solid out there. Franklin saw that he was going to come off that screen, and he darted out there to try to steal that ball getting another possession for Longwood, but way too much contact. He put in one of the top free throw shooters for GCU at the line here with just six seconds to play. In the ball game, Jared Martin's going to come into the game too. Also for the Lopes, for number 42, Jared Martin. Jared Martin to the line. 
So nobody really had any foul trouble. I just think they wanted to get some smaller, quicker defenders out there to guard against long shots so long would race this ball up the floor. Benson connects on both. 6.1 on the clock. Bringing it up quickly. BK Ash loses the handle out of bounds. I think they're going to say it was what? tipped away. What? Yeah, Seriously? nine tenths of the second left on the clock, so Longwood has an opportunity to still get a catch and shoot. Let's see who this ball goes off to. Oh, they lobbed it up. Nobody was ready oh, for it. Oh, nobody was ready for oh, the ball. Caught Smith it right. caught it, shot it. I think he got that ball off in time. The ball was kind of laying loose there. No one had touched it, so the shot clock, that excuse me, the game the clock, did not start. Smith went over, picked it up. Spun over his right shoulder, then knocked it down. So this just kind of sit loose here. They don't start the clock until he grabs it there and fires it up. And man, couldn't tell what the red light was at. Let's clock. see one more time here. Oh, I think they started the clock early. Oh, look at that. Oh, they did. I think they. I think oh. they're going to wave that off. But they really did start the clock uh, probably about a half a second too early there. No basket. 44-22, let's send it over to Kate. An early Christmas present. That basket did not count. Okay. All right, well, let's talk about that first half of impressive numbers. Eight threes, 13 assists for the team. You guys started off firing on all cylinders, slowed down a bit in the final minutes, but what impressed you with that first half? Well, we started off great. I mean, defensively, we're good. We made our shots, but, you know, we can't start just going down there and jacking threes and start living by that. We still got to be aggressive. And then we got the lead, and we started giving up baskets. We got to do a better job of... Uh, cutting down on the penetration and, you know, just finishing the half. Once again, strong effort from the bench with 28 points and Fifi leading the way. What is feeling his success as Blake? Well, I mean, Fee's a good player, and I thought with that second group, he'd have a chance to score a little bit more. He comes in and he gets hot early, so I was happy for him. And, you know, Matt and Jared and Shaq and, and Rob and those guys bring us a lot of energy coming off the bench. All right, thank you very much, Coach Marley. Uh, breaking it down for us. Pretty pleased with this 44 20 lead right now, but guys, as he uh, said, they want the team to come out firing like they started the first half, not ended it. No doubt about it. Signing autographs for the fans as he makes his way into the locker room. 44 20 is now the score as they. Wave off that final shot by the Lancers. The Lopes in control in this opening half in the last home game before Christmas. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from GC Arena in Phoenix after we take this timeout. I've been to other colleges, and GCU is the most student-friendly campus that I've been in. I work full-time, I have a young family. Coming to class at night after work has been perfect with my schedule. It allows me to still, you know, work a, a 50 to 60 hour week, but also come to school. I could have gone online, but I like the in-class experience. I work full-time, and I'm also a parent, so having evening classes have been the best option for me. Well, my favorite part of the program has definitely been the students and the faculty, um, especially the students. Our cohort has been really close and we've become friends even outside of class. We all have a relationship now and it really helps you get through the program. The professors have all been great. The focus on the individual students is unlike any other campus I've been in. What I've learned throughout my curriculum here at GCU I've been able to apply on, on multiple levels. It is one night a week, so it's a lot easier to attend classes, especially since I like the in-person interaction. I know this knowledge is going to help me. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. The Little Lopes are the halftime entertainment right now at GCU Arena as the Lopes and their fans are celebrating an early holiday here at GCU Arena with an early tip-off. And right now, they're getting a great gift to head into the holidays with a 44-20 lead over the Lancers of Longwood. And we have a treat for you as well as I am joined by President and CEO here at GCU, Brian Mueller. Thanks so much for being here. And I know it is GCU Employee Night. 
When you look up here and you see so many of your employees here in the stands with their families, what's that mean to you? It's it's amazing. You know, we were nearly bankrupt 10 years ago, and now we sit here with 10,000 employees, and uh, we're all here celebrating Christmas. They got off work early, and they came for dinner, and now we're here, all here at the ball game, so it's a great chance to be together. And GCU is a Christian university, so around the holidays, it's so important to spend that time with family and friends. What's the message you want your fans to take away? Well, thank you to, to everybody that's here. Thank you for all the low fans that are out in the community that are watching tonight. You know, our brand is to, is to give and to reach out and to help people that are less fortunate. And we've done a lot of that in the first semester. We're doing a lot of that tonight. And so we just need to keep being thankful for how we've been blessed and keep giving to, to people who are less fortunate. Along those lines, a very uh, special thing we saw heading into halftime. Dan Marley heading into the locker room to go talk to his team, yet he signed an autograph for a small child right there. I think that just kind of just encompasses the experience you get out here going to a GCU game. Well, yeah, our, our people, uh, this is such a strong, tight-knit community, but how they've embraced Dan Marley, uh, it couldn't have been a, a better marriage uh, than, than for the, uni uh, the university to have Dan come here and be our coach. Um, he is such a personable guy. He has so much charisma. Kids love him. Uh, our students love him. Uh, our fans and staff love him. And for him to do something like that, that's just how he is all the time. And so he exudes the community feeling that we have here at Grand Canyon. We're so fortunate to have him. Right, Eddie, you guys uh, obviously love the friendly combines here at GCU Arena. You see the Havocs in uh, in their action every night, but we're going to have a lot of fans traveling for a free game out at, or at Orleans Arena next week in Vegas. Take me through what you're expecting with that matchup at that neutral site, but also kind of a preview of what's to come in March with the WAC tournament. Well, that's a great point. The reason they schedule the game is they want to get experience playing in that arena. Everybody knows that we're eligible for the tournament now, and we, our conference has an automatic bid, and it goes to the person who or the team that wins the, uh, that conference tournament. And so we'll get a chance to play on that floor uh, in that atmosphere, which will be good for us. Uh, but it's also a, good, a chance for us to travel together to Las Vegas and be part of that whole experience. And, if you're not, if you're if you're thinking about uh, joining us in March, it's going to be a great, great three days. Um, uh, we expect to do well. Uh, we're going to travel with thousands of people there, and it'll be a great community building experience. And who knows, if we get on a roll and we win that thing, it'll be historic. So I, I highly encourage you to think about joining us in Las Vegas early in March. What are you anticipating with conference play? Just a couple of weeks away, you've seen now what the team can do in this non-conference action. And we've been talking throughout this game. They've really stepped it up on defense, leading in so many categories in the WAC. What pleases you so far with this first half of the season? What do you want to see more of in that conference action? Well, the defensive intensity is incredible. I mean, our players play very, very hard. Everybody says that about us. Um, and But we were struggling offensively. And we're starting to find a little bit of rhythm offensively. You know, we have a lot of new guys and we have a lot of young guys that are getting a lot of playing time. And uh, Coach Marley is bringing them along. The first 10 minutes of this game were incredible, but it was indicative of what we're capable of. And so uh, we got another couple months to keep improving, but we'll find out quick because uh, Seattle's good. We play them on the road, and then we play New Mexico State here January 11th, which will be an incredible experience. I know. Way to start off the conference action with a high excitement for sure. Oh, that's going to be it's going to be a whiteout. This place will be sold out. It'll be loud. Uh, if you have a chance to get here, it'll be an experience. All right. Thank you very much. Brian Mueller for joining us. That will be when we're back in action here at GCU Arena. But we will be bringing you the game from Las Vegas next week so you can tune into your view for all your looks action for usual. All right, still more of this halftime show coming your way. Barry and Scott, they are bright and they are in-house celebrating the holidays and they will be right back with the first half breakdown right after this. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. 
GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Betty White's in the house. Hold on, two, 44 to 20. The Lopes on top of the Lancers in the opening half. Barry Vitell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, and our crew here at GCU Arena in Phoenix, Arizona at a uh, high flying. Don't adjust your sets, by the way. <laughs> you might want to wear some sunglasses. I'm a gift. I th You're uh, a gift? Present, uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, something. that's something you color want. Color chart. Yeah. <laughs> How about that opening half? Talk about colorful. The Lopes were vibrant. Uh, on fire. You could hear it in uh, Mr. Mueller's voice there. He was loving that action yeah. on the offense, finally seeing these guys, uh, you know, translating some of that defense into points on the offensive, and they were off and flying. Let's take a look at our opening half highlights. We begin of one of eight three-pointers. This one from Josh Braun. Well, I love the way Josh Braun got himself ready to play in this one. He got his feet squared, and then the big Italian knocked down another outside shot. He going out there for 6'11", knocking down shots. Keontae Burden using his wheels in transition, getting behind the defense. And after the Lopes were rolling there, Jeter finally got him going there at the five-minute mark. And then Fifi Duke came off that bench and went all cray-cray <laughs> from behind the arc. And then... Behind and then the high handoff. I love that one there for the dunk. He had a 11 points uh, in, the, in the first half, and then Matt Jackson came in off that line too. And all Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy over here to his buddy set him up. Jared Martin from three, and then he said one was nice. I can see how two takes. He knocked down another one. Then Ash, this was a, a nice odd job by him, kind of getting this team back into a little momentum, taking it to the locker room. They had 11-5 run there to end the half try to steal some of GC's use thunder at the end there. Eight of 19 from the arc, 19 rebounds, 13 assists, 28 to zip, bench points, 8-2, fast break points, 32-2 run by the Lopes early on. They did go on about a six, close to a six minute drought there. It's the momentum and the chill. Got a little chilly in here for a little while. Sometimes when you burst out to such a large margin, you relax, it's human nature. And this Lopes team will have to figure out those scenarios when they're in those and keep hammering the ball inside, getting the stops, and getting the transition buckets going. Made a couple threes early. Sometimes you start, like Coach Marley said, jacking up threes. Uh, and you can really go inside, do your damage inside. So that inside out basketball seems to work best for the Lopes. That's what they got to go back here to start this second half. All right, when we come back, Kate will be joined by some very special little Lopes. You won't want to go anywhere. 44-20, the Lopes over the Lancers. Keep it right here. Canyon University Championship Golf Course features over 7,200 yards of tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, and a 22,000 square foot clubhouse. The Lope House Restaurant, serving modern American cuisine, is open to the public seven days a week. Come experience the best golf and dining destination in the heart of Phoenix. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. Hey you, are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in, we're going on an adventure. 
In Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to experience. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you can earn your degree in fewer than four years and explore everything Arizona has to offer. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. Welcome back. Tis the season for some holiday spirit and also some great college basketball. You're in tuned into Lopes basketball here on Your View. Lopes with the 44-20 lead over the Lancers here at the break. And the big story here is the bench. 28 points coming off the bench for the Lopes. Meanwhile, the Lancers coming off the bench. No production there yet. BC leading the way with 10 points. Matt Jackson with 8 and Ash leading the way for the Lancers. All right, I'm Kate Longworth, and I'm joined by some very special guests now, the Little Lopes. They just performed here at halftime, and now they're joining me, and I want to ask you, Claire, what was your favorite thing about performing at halftime? Uh, my favorite thing about performing was meeting new people. And I'm meeting you guys, so Eva, you tell me, what was your favorite part? My favorite thing was dancing with the cheerleaders and stunting. Very nice. And Petal, what was yours? Um, I liked... I liked um, everything. That's a good answer. And uh, this might be a good answer for this one, too. What do you want for Christmas, Petal? I want a kitten that says white as snow. Wow, I hope Santa is listening for that one. That's a good request. What about you, Eva? What, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, I want art supplies for Christmas. Very nice. A little artist in the house. And what about you, Claire? I like, well, I like to do art, so yeah, art supplies. All right, well, we have a little, a couple of budding artists over here and also some great dancers over there. Here's wishing these little lopes a very, very Christmas with their families and hoping that Santa brings them exactly what they want. Guys, back over to you. Fantastic. They did a fantastic performance at halftime. The little lopes. They like, the, they like the stunts, whatever those are. I guess that's a cheer move. Yeah, that's when, that, they, they, when they lift them that's up. That's not and Santa, stuff. is it? That wasn't Santa. With the humbug? Is that Santa? Is that Santa? <laughs> I, don't know. I hope that's not the real Santa. He's got a lot of work to do. He can't be hanging out here and watching the lopes underway. The, yeah, you're right. He, he could. He's probably got everything taken care well, of. Well, the elves do it all. The elves do all wow. the presents and Jeez. stock in the bags. You're saying the big man stuff. doesn't do anything? All he does is drop the presents down the chimney. He's got an easy job. Wow. Good. Apparently, Fifi, they do, thinks uh, the North Pole is somewhere north of Finland, which is near the Arctic Circle, which I think might be close. Do you watch the no NORAD radar <laughs> on Christmas Eve? Oh, the Santa Tracker, for sure. Yeah, Santa Tracker. Oh, that's big, yeah. Ah. Gotta get in bed before they get over to him. Foul committed. You ever get busted? Shields. What? Excuse me? Did you ever get busted? What? Do you mean like? You know. You know. Busted. Yeah. On, on Christmas. No. No. Oh, no. that's good. Never. Okay. No. Yeah. No. Never did. You? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You did. Oh. That was. A, that was, a, that was a, not even in shock. About that, it. You know, I was such a. I'm such a good. Storyteller that yeah. worked my way right out of it. Vincent Paul, and they open up the second half just the way that they started the opening half. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what you got. That's what you got to like the, the extra pass, the ball boot leading to the three-point shots, and I think Coach Marley hit the nail right on the head when he said that last seven or eight minutes of that first half they were just jacking up threes. The labor fight for that ball. Prayer in the corner. Oh, look at the end of the time. Look down at his feet. Fire. And that was nice that time because, you know, that, that's that fast break three. Prayer does a good job running deep to the corner, making it tough on the defense to find him in rotation and gives him plenty of time to knock the shot down. Smith back out, shield, bounce pass. Ah, too much oh, yeah. by the big man yeah. down low. A little too much body. That's one he'll, he'll learn to use his muscle in his size without trying to put too much muscle on that play. But look at Frere deep down in that corner there, just a foot or two off the baseline. And that's an easy pitch over for Casey Benson and for an easy assist. Out of bounds. Inbound. 
Off the fingertips of Jeter. You know what the biggest stress now about Christmas? It's that little elf, dude. Elf on the shelf. Every, every day. You gotta remember. He, he, no, well, what? Hey, what? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta what? You gotta, you gotta try to find him. Yeah, you gotta look for him. You gotta find him, and he gets. And they can't stay the, in the same place. Gets in some of the craziest situations. Oh, amazing. Sneaky little guy. Braun, three. Good! Wow, they're right in threes tonight. Fields. Floater. Short. Pulled down by Freyer. 9-0 run to begin the second half. Wow. Freyer, eight boards in this in this game. Really? Already? I take Wrong. that back. Give him one rebound. Oh, that's a discernible difference. Can't see. That's three. Wow. That's that's two rebounds for Frere. Santa, somebody needs some glasses. So like he's LASIK. Get that for Christmas. Yeah, Miley could probably hook you up there. Yeah, he's got a laser eye doctor. Yeah, he's down. He does those commercials right. for. He had that eye surgery. He's hitting threes out there. I've seen him on the court sometimes, shooting that ball up like he did when he was playing for the Phoenix Suns. A huge proponent of the LASIK. Had that done about 20 years ago. Freyer to inbound. 53-20, Lopes in control. Good labor, what are you doing? Benson, inside, quickly. Braun drives. Right hand, not there. Fighting after it, Vernon. Back out, Benson for three. Short. Braun, though, he muscles it away. Wow, Josh, short. Can't do it a third time, can they? Oh, Ash brings it up. Bounce pass, Smith. Inside, foul's gonna be committed. Who's he gonna get, Freyer? Yep. Lopes are owning the glass. They are a plus 10, 24 to 14 on the glass. And I love that last one there by Keontae Vernon. He got the ball kind of in that free throw lined area. Flew it back out to Braun, who drove to the basket. And Vernon doesn't stand out there in the perimeter. He crashed the glass and got the ball back. That's showing that hustle and extra effort. A lot of times those don't show up in big things on the stat sheet, but all plays that help you win a basketball game when you average those things out over 40 minutes. Benson up high to Braun. Braun just beyond the arc off the wing. Driving, and came up a little high on Cintron. Travel. Travel. His wheel went Ooh. out on him or something, and maybe tweaked an ankle or stepped on someone's foot. So it caused his pivot foot to slide. See if he gets on someone's foot down here as he's driving to the basket, or is it just maybe just a wet spot on the floor? That left leg, and he knew right away. <laughs> Trying to work it out there. That's. That's one thing I was grateful for. I had bad shoulders, knees, elbows, everything, but I had good ankles when I played for 15 years in the pros. Shields hands it off, Cintron. Cintron in the paint, right hand and in off the glass. Oh, that was nice, hard fought, driving basket. Right to the heart of that GCU defense. First bench points for the Lancers, Cintron. Well, it's about time they got a little bump off their bench. Ooh, 28 to the two. Lopes bench has been winning that battle in a big way. Which probably hasn't gone to his bench yet here in the second half, but you know those guys are chomping at the bit to get back on the floor. Vernon with a sweet move. Not there, but Freyer is. Oh, did you see that move by Keontae I, Vernon? I, I, I saw Hello? the move by Vernon. It was nice and fast, and I think Oscar Freyer came down from the rafters. He paratrooped he down. He Threw that ball down out on his way. Yeah, I might need later. Through the basket. It was unbelievable. Field. Smith. Cintron. Not there. Oh, the rebound push back out. Cintron leaves it there. Stepping up. Shields. Good. I like that mid-range shot. Just show and go with the three. Take one rhythm. Dribble and knock down a mid-range game. So many kids today don't possess that ability to knock down it. Basic 16 footer. Blows my mind. Gotta have an all well rounded game. Get to the rim. Yeah, everyone likes the ESP and highlight dunk, the three point shot. If you want to be a true basketball player, you need to have a mid range game. And here comes Frere one more time. Nobody puts a body on him, cleaning up that mess. 
there by Keontae Vernon. Now I know he's got at least three rebounds. There you go, 55, 26, 15, 13, 31 to go in the second half. Deontay Vernon, that was a sweet move. Frayer cleaned it up. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, we know he's everyone's favorite reindeer. After all, he's the one who helped Santa find your homes on Christmas night. We're talking about Rudolph the Red, Red Nose Reindeer. And the GCU players, well, they are big fans of him. The thing I admire the most about Rudolph um, is the fact that he never gave up. Even though all the other reindeers made fun of him and didn't let him play in any reindeer games, he, uh, he continued to prevail and uh, eventually led Santa's sleigh. A lot of people call him red-nosed reindeer, making fun of his nose. But you know what? I think he's cool because he still does his job regardless of what people say. And Rudolph, if you're watching this, shout outs to you. The thing that impresses me the most about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is probably uh, his, his ability to overcome adversity, you know, I mean, uh, he was picked on, uh, he just, and, and he became uh, one of the most uh, influential reindeer of all time, so, you know, I just, just uh, look up to him. The most impressive thing about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is he a savage. Definitely a savage, uh, he was a real one too. On his own, he don't care about what everybody else. Got to be about. different. Stay different. Yeah. Red nose. Red nose. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Never have I heard so many uh, yep. very deep meanings to uh, a favorite children's song, but really great messages there, guys. And I like that he is kind of a gamer, if you will. The way Rudolph uh, rose to the challenge and led the way and uh, battled adversity, just like the player said. I really like that we started that off with the mayor, Josh Broad really bringing the true morals out. It just yeah. fits his character. Yeah, right. Was was like, he's stuff. a boss. <laughs> I love that. He didn't care. Hey, and if you care. I like the hey, shot off by Sheik. I'm still going to do what I got to do. Yep. Save the day. Yep. <laughs> Hater's going to hate. Inbound, Labor. Benson, hide it. Pulled down. Shields. Plays catch with Freyer. Stopping, popping, good. That was clean. Talk about that mid-range game. Casey Benson, fifth-year senior, he's got that mid-range game developed. Short, Smith, rebound, Benson. Cintron on him, five rebounds. Benson, who loses it? Spencer Franklin checks in for Ja'Shawn Smith. Josh back there on that ankle, wrapped up. I would like to see anybody at the trainer's table. Interesting to see if he even comes back in this one. Hey, yeah. They got a 31 point advantage right now. Got a tough travel night. And they want to get some ice on that thing and, and get it elevated so it doesn't swell. You know, you get up in that altitude on those airplanes after games and that's what you worry about. So his training staff always making sure players get on these planes, and especially in the league, you know, with a, some sort of a cooling unit or an ice bag to keep that swelling down. I don't know how they're traveling to. They're chartering up there, do you know, if they're going to fly commercials. So a tough one. They probably have to walk 30, 35, you know, 38 minutes at Louisville. So you may want to just say, hey, let's, let's go ahead and shut him down for the night if his ankle's not right. Now, it's just a small little tweak, and they need to work a few more things into their, their game plan for the Louisville game. You bring him back, but man, if it's sore and stiff, go ahead and rest him. I'm no doctor. That sounded good, though. That's my disclaimer. I always yeah. say I've had that at the end. Ready to play one on TV? Yeah. Shields. Sweeping move. Foul on, did we get Labor or Jackson? Labor. Here's the updated real injury report <laughs> from Kate. What's he got, Kate? Love you or anything, Scott, but he didn't even hurt his ankle. It's actually his right. No, I'm just kidding. Not that bad. It was his left ankle. It's a sprain. He is cleared to go back in the game, but I do see what you were going with that. Smart thinking, and we'll see how it all plays out. But the good news is it's just a slight sprain. Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. I thought for sure you had. I, mean, I was going to say, oh, my God, don't tell me it's a big little turf toe or something like that. I'll tell you what, if there's one person that wants to play tonight, it'll be Josh Bob, who right off the coaching staff. 
can tie him to that bench. Everybody wants to play. Let's continue at this pace. We'll be seeing some others that we've seen recently, perhaps. Ibrahima and Sheik. Yeah, that was a great thing about that game against Mississippi Valley State. They got to clear their bench. Oh, Freyer can't stuff it home. Oh, he wanted that stocking stuffer. Did it look like the man Didn't was it? looking down it into did, the did. basket? Yep. He seemed like he was so high that he was looking down into the rim. Hey, maybe my imagination would be the judge, but he climbs up oh. on somebody's back there. I think it was Labor's back. He gets his head, oh, his head's up darn near near the rim. If we could jump into the hoop. That must be fun. Yeah. Get up that high, that fast. When you were younger, could you get high? Did you? Not like that. No, no. Not like that. Kids, you know. 59 27, the Lancers in possession of the ball now. Shields over to BK Ash. Moves to his left, kicks back out. Quick ball movement here. Simtron in the near side. Simtron steps out. Yeah. He did it, put that foot back to get a kick start. Stepped right on that sideline in front of their bench. Coach Chi can't believe it. Uh, Lopes beat Mississippi Valley State 71 to 38 on Monday night. It's 59 27, 14 minutes to go. That gets along with Lancers. Freyer. Far side, Fifi. Back out behind his back. Freyer plays catch with Casey. Bounce pass, Fifi. Benson, he's going to drive it. Push back out, Freyer. Good for three points. Nice job there. Cracking the interior of that zone defense. And Benson whips a pass over to Oscar Freyer. Knocks down the three. Couldn't get the dunk to go, but got that three up. Put a little more air under it than he usually did. Oh, Does. sweet move by DK Ash. Timeout by Coach G after the nice bucket. Yeah, BK Ash, he's been working hard out here. First points in the second half, and I think Coach Ash realized he's got a short team. He needs to get his guys a little bit of a blow to try to finish up this game. 13-24 to go, second half, 62-29. There's the three by Freyer. Yeah, that's just that penetration, a little whip pass over there from Benson, and then Ash going hard to the hole, just put one hand on it. Go ahead and put it in reverse and knock it down. Folks, well, leading in most statistical categories and add the assists 17 to 2 in favor of GCU. We've mentioned it, they're traveling tonight. Head coach Dan Marley and the men's basketball squad hitting the road for the first of four straight starting Saturday when the Lopes traveled to Louisville, Kentucky to take on the Cardinals. Louisville now under head coach David Padgett has put together a 9-2 start to their season. Their two losses to top 25 programs. Tip-off is set for 11 a.m. Phoenix time. Tune into the Fanatic, 1580 a.m., 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM, with Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper on the call. Should be a good matchup. 12 of 26 from the arc are the Lopes in the game. Well, they're doing a good job spacing the floor out. Really moving the ball well from side to side. The penetration and then the pitch lead to some good shots as well. So, you know, 14 three-point shots is their team record, and they're got to, they're sitting on 12 right now. Four of seven this half. Amazing how early on you can just see that they they have what it takes, you know, they're just in the groove. You know? well, that's a lot of time in the lab. I mean, when you realize you're struggling from behind the arc or even anywhere on the floor the way they have, you got to put in the extra time. It can't just be when it's time to practice. you got to be there before practice and after practice and on your own time, going back in there and grabbing one of your your teammates or a buddy in the, in the dorm and saying, hey, I want to go get up 500 shots. Are you willing to come in here and rebound for me? You rebound for me, I'll rebound for you. We can get this thing done in 30 minutes. Oh, a tip on it. Did the Lancers. Chapman back in to Jeter, who tipped that ball. B.K. Ash 
Inside the arc, loses it. Pick back up. Cintron moving towards the baseline. Back out. Ash. Floater. BK Ash. BK Ash. He scores buck, you know, buckets in in buckets. He once he gets one, he seems like he gets another and another. And uh, Lopes got to be worried about that. BK leading the Lancers with 10 points in the game, averaging 13.7. Lumber moving on Cintron, right hand foul. Well, Blumberg, Roberts is, is not real comfortable playing with his back to the basket. He's much more comfortable at this stage in his development at facing the basket, especially shooting the, the long ball from the outside. So nice to see him make a good, strong, aggressive move with his back to the basket, resulting in a trip to the cherry strike. Ooh. Lumber took that. All right, miss. 17 of 18 coming in, 94 percent. Two of three this evening. There. Franklin spins around. Brass works. Mark. That oh, really was. You had two trappers, two interceptors to take that pass. Fifi heavy. Blumbergs pulls it up in front of Franklin. Fresh 30 on the shot clock. Hard. Fast Blumbergs turning now on Franklin. Out front, not there. Pushed out. Martin got a hand on it to his Aussie brother. It's own in the class. They are. 29 boards to 16 for Longwood. Hard. It was Lab. Back out. Jackson's going to leave it there for Martin. Martin fouled by Camille Chapman. Chapman's got four personal fouls. Timeout on the floor, 11.49 to go. Second half, Lopes in control. 63 to 31 over the Longwood Lancers. college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice. I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Hey you, are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in, we're going on an adventure. In Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to experience. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you can earn your degree in fewer than four years and explore everything Arizona has to offer. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. Well, they won't be home for Christmas. After tonight's game, the team heading out to Louisville. That's right, they're traveling tonight after what they hope will be a big victory over Longwood to play on the 23rd at Louisville. And then they are heading to Vegas. And you too can spend your post-Christmas days in Vegas as the Lopes take the court at the Orleans Arena against Morgan State. This is a neutral site, but it's a big site game because this is just a preview of what's ahead with the team is eligible for that WAC tournament in Vegas come March. After that, on the 30th, bringing in the new year just about at Illinois, before heading up to Seattle U on the 6th to kick to tip off WAC play before coming home here to GCU Arena on the 11th for a whiteout. If uh, Barry and Scott have suits like that for tonight to show the holiday spirit, I can't wait to see their all-white suits for that game. Excuse me? New Mexico State guys, start planning. All white suit. Nobody wants to see no, me in all white. Do. You're like CeeLo. Uh, I would, I would tear it on my shoulder. Or I something. already kind of look like Casper as it is, so I, <laughs> they wouldn't be able to see me. 
Louisville coming up. Remember Michael Potter, Tom Kuiper have the call on 15-80 the Fanatic. That's the Cardinals. Ash. Baseline. He did it again. Look at him. He gets buckets. Dude. And uh, he does it going into the basket. 12 for Ash. Do right by Shaq. Far to his right. Down in the corner. Blumberg looks for three. Short. Underneath again. Lopes punch it out. T feet. Martin. Too long for this long wood team. And they're using their size to their advantage underneath. Jackson travel. He kind of hesitated. It should have just kept driving. He wanted to go to the yeah. bucket. Now give Longwood credit. Now a couple defenders stepped in front of Matty. He tried to snap it back, but referees Wilson him from moving his feet too quickly. Lombards. Ryan Smith. Loose ball. Oh, right to the legs of Jackson. <laughs> right to the wicket still. Yeah, and how often do you see a 6'10", 6'11", freshman out there sliding with a defender in the backcourt, carries him all the way to the free throw of the three-point line, and then knocks the ball away? Long distance there by Smith is off the mark. At the feet of Blumberg's on the ground is Franklin. He leaves it for Ash. Guys don't like it down there. Oh, the you said that numerous times. Yeah, I, I guarantee you, Blumberg's was, hey, give me that ball one more time. I'll show you I'll catch it next time. But it's a 50 50 chance he's going to catch it next time. That's a tough pass for the big man. And it's in tight spaces. You got to get it and try to power it up. Dealing with the rim, the backboard, and the defender. Car to his right, Fifi, quickly to Blumberg. Blumberg pulls down baseline, little floater with the right hand, and in. Oh, that's what Blumberg likes to do his damage. Let me catch that ball on the perimeter, face up somebody, figure out what I need to do to get it in the hole. Five for Blumberg. Lopes got him doubled up right now, 66 to 33. And they are flat out getting it done today. Away from the call. From the ball, rather, Fifi Adu called. First on Fifi. The Lancers dealing with some injuries. Isaiah Walton, this is his third game, been down with a groin injury. Missed Cornell, missed ASU, missed tonight. Averaging 17 points per game. Nice move by Franklin. Goes left handed in. Yeah, Franklin's had some nice moves tonight. It hasn't all found the basket. Just his fourth points tonight. Starting point guard also out. Fifi back out. No look. Martin. Jackson. Rebound. Once again. Par. Fifi. Jackson's getting his hands on balls. Yeah. They got him for three boards. I, I had to talk to that statistician. I think Jackson and some of these other guys have gotten more boards than they've been getting credit for them this evening. Got a little turnaround jump shot underneath there. And that was well defended. BK Ash moves right side. Oh, nice pickup by Carr. Up for Fifi Adu. And with that, I bid you adieu. Oh, nice right there. The other defense creates some offense for him. Coach Marley finally going to that bench, getting some guys in and don't see the floors. That Milstead, the young yeah. freshman, getting ready to come in here probably for a, a do or oh, check car. Almost got picked off by Carr. Ash, look out, loose ball. Franklin, moving on Jackson. Back out, seven on the shot clock. Smith, drive, and in off the glass. Like John Smith. Smith. He's had some buckets tonight where he's driven that ball and Hung in the air with two hands, kind of pushed it up off glass and been able to get it in. Got nine points now. Carr, no look. Jackson! Got a little contact there, but mustered his way in. Yeah, and, uh, two years ago we saw Matt Jackson. He wouldn't have finished that right. after some contact. That back and muscle he's at is show, uh, serving him well. 
70-37 is the score. Timeout on the uh, floor. Barry and Scott back with you, and Oscar Freyer inserted back into the starting lineup. Ten points in the game, and we've seen some very Oscar Freyer-like qualities here, whether he's flying, coming down, rappelling from the uh, top of the roof, or jumping into the basket from the floor. Well, he's being aggressive. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. He realized that uh, Coach Marley put him on that bench because he wasn't doing the job defensively. And as good as he scored tonight, he's equally played as well defensive, played hard out there. And I love that because he's starting to figure out how to play with Vincent, how to run deep into the corner, create some easy opportunities. And, oh, yeah, something he's always done extremely well is get on that offensive glass and put a little bit more air under that outside shot. And I've, I've noticed that he seems to be finding the bottom of the net more often. So nice job by that young fella. Ten points, four rebounds for Oscar Frank. He's enjoying the night, as are the Lopes on this Christmas party eve for GCU. Kids are having a blast, making sure that they're nice right before Santa's big trip. Getting some ugly sweaters. That's a sweet jacket, maybe. Wow. Have to do that that next year. Looks like Santa. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the ones that uh, yeah, someone that made off. Yeah, made these jackets for us. Yeah. Yeah, nice job, very fast, very fun. Oh, nice. I've gotten a lot of compliments walking, you did, walking really? around the arena with, with my no, Yeah, I had to kick people to laugh and add more than they're really compliments. You think? No. There's Walton and Glover. That's a lot of their offense yeah, right there. Of their 17 and point score, and a 13 point score on the bench. So you can see why they're finding it hard to get that ball in the hole tonight. Only two players off of the bench for the Lancers. Yeah, Glover out with a uh, ankle. Yeah, he's on the right. Walt now with a groin injury. Glover, their starting guard. Doesn't go for the Lancers. Blumberg picks it up. Carr. Wilson handles it seven and a half minutes and he's got now to run this Lopes attack. Perfect from the arc. Time he has spent on the floor. Goes with some confidence. Blumberg pulled down. Got an open lane. He gets fouled though. Looks like Franklin. Franklin's going to pick up his third. I like that move. Kind of a chin strap move there by Blumberg. Not settling for the, what the defense wanted him to take. Took the fight right in there to the heart of that defense there. That's just button up your chin strap and take it hard to the hole. You know you're going to get some contact. Getting this one free for all season. Oh, what is that? And this two here in the second half. Sometimes I wonder if I'm, when I'm talking over here, it gets yeah. so quiet in this arena that it distracts the free throw shooters for the Lopes. I'm sure that was it. Wouldn't that be brutal if they looked over here and gave you the eye? <laughs> hey, man, they, can, they can meet me outside by my car. Whoa, they ever whoa, do that. Whoa, I, whoa, I ain't afraid whoa. of these young kids. Whoa. They don't scare me. Get out of me. my yard. <laughs> Get off I'll my tell lawn. you what, I'm working over here. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Mueller would like that one too much. Uh, that's a challenge. Challenge as a player. I don't think that's going to go over real well with my job security. Not really the holiday spirit. Yeah, no, I gotta, I might just Kids. turn a deaf ear to that yeah. one. They love you. I like these kids. They actually don't have to have that guy on their nope. on their team as far as you know his personality wise goes. Mark Seems like they all yeah. in a loving way. Yeah, I think it's that's, a loving that's way. Yeah. Say Josh Braun, he gets off, gets gets uh, gets on me sometimes going by here, but yeah, I think they're doing the right thing with Josh Braun. I don't think I don't looking for ice bag on his ankle. He's got both shoes on, so yeah. I don't see that they're icing him down. Just you know, you're up thirty. 
I can't do the math. 34 points, is that what that is? Yes, it is. Way to go. Uh, I, I think it makes sense to just go ahead and you know, put him on ice for the rest of the night, so, and, and, so to speak, and get ready for going to the uh, uh, Louisville. I mean, he gets, he got, it's a tough matchup that he's got he's to be facing some tough guards and some long players underneath. Laver trying for three. Young center in Louisville. Long three attempt. Nothing but net there for Chapman. Quickly, Fifi. First three for Chapman. Oh, look at that. Not there for Blumberg, though. Couldn't finish. Pretty play. Ash. Tied by Blumberg. Chapman will try to get up another one here from behind the yard. He had a five against ASU, and that was, his, as you said, his first one tonight. I wonder if he's going to look to try to strike again from behind the yard. Ash bounce pass underneath off the glass. Hoop and a harm coming up as Marion Jeter is fouled by Alessandro Labor. Fourth. I don't know if that's because he had three fouls and wanted to challenge the shot, but not really want to get a foul. If that's the reason why our Jeter's got a chance for a three-point play. You're going to protect that. Go ahead and drop the hammer on him. He's a big, strong kid. He can go to the line and make his two free throws. He's, you know, at the other end, they're not going to give you an opportunity for a three-point play, so go ahead and take him out. There's nothing wrong with a intentional foul. You don't have to make a flagrant foul, but give up an easy three-point play unnecessarily. We haven't seen Braun, obviously. They're probably sitting him down with a little ankle tweak he took. Yeah, Benson and Vernon we haven't seen. Oh, nice oh, turnaround oh, by Labor. Oh, oh, Benson, Vernon, Braun. Of course, Frere. Frere's on that bench, too. I think those cats are done for the night. A couple more minutes, we'll probably see some others. 30-point lead. The Lopes have been in control from the get-go. They went on a 32-2 run earlier on. It was 39-9 at one point. Fifi, sweet boob over field. Oh, goodness! Did you see that? That was nice. He jumped in the air, kind of like he was sitting in a movie chair, hung in the air with the left hand, flipped it off the glass. Under five to go, BK Ash. Good, he looked like the Matrix there for a minute, didn't he? Wow, look at Chapman. I wondered if Chapman might try to strike again from long range. Careful. Stepped out of bounds with Milstead. <laughs> Poor Milstead. He had a guy scratched him all the way from his wrist down to his elbow. And and he's trying to fight out of that, that arm bar. He steps on the line. The rest what the refs called him for. But look at this one by Fifi again. Hey, look at that. He was there like in a movie chair with his legs out and recline in the recline mode there. All he needed was a soda and some popcorn and laid that ball up off the basket. Derwin Smith in for Fifi. Franklin takes it from Ash. Trying to move on Smith. Back out. Long distance attempt. Not there for Jeter. 4-15 and counting, second half. Lumbergs for three. Heavy. Rebound was kicked out. Carr can't get it. Picked up by Ash. He loses the handle. Went off a of car. Somebody has it made yeah, its way I past the car. end. Line. I think Carr, yeah, Carr was hounding him like he said there, kind of playing off his hip. And then when the ball kind of got loose, it was Carr's right foot that kicked it down underneath and out of, out of bounds on the baseline. Four minutes to go, 75-46. Lopes looking for their ninth victory of the season. Smith tried the three. Three of 14 from the arc. Milstead near side. I can see Milstead use his wheels to get to the rack. Longberg into Smith. Can't grab it. Ash. Pass drives, looking over. Kerwin Smith doesn't go. The second attempt by Franklin, unsuccessful. Uh, Franklin's working hard. Yeah. Doesn't have a lot to show for. He only got two points on the night. 
Is that Milstead over yeah. there on that left side? And here I am saying attack the basket. He said, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm going to stand out here and get three versus two. Came in, perfect three for three, as I mentioned. Now four for four from the arc. But if my Moreau Catholic high school teammate, Oscar Freyers, is putting on a show, I want to put on a show. I don't blame him. And, and that's what you're supposed to do on, on, on you know, situations like these. You, you got to be aggressive. You don't want to go out here showboat and try to show the other team up, but you still got to stay in attack. Well, here's Kerwin Smith attacking. Look at that. Kerwin Smith. Kerwin Smith. Yeah, he's worked on his jump walk. I, I've noticed the improvement in that with the left hand. And that time he used his, his right hand there, just a little left shoulder turn. He's been working on that one since about the sixth grade. Sheik, Sai Sabane making his way to the scorer's table. Ibrahima pass. Everybody's going to get some action tonight. Look at Milstead. He wants some more out there. Sheik with a shout out to Rudolph earlier. <laughs> Check Carr can't believe it. He said, I'm in great position here. This dude just ran me over and I get whistled for the call. Time out of the floor, 210 remaining, 80 to 48. Lopes cruising to their ninth win of the season. Rayer and company. I'm Dewey, a student here at GCU studying communications. My dad graduated from GCU in 2009, and he is definitely bleeding purple. He loves GCU to the max. And me choosing to follow in his footsteps was the best idea I could have chosen. I absolutely love sports, playing them and watching them, and I could talk about them all day. GCU has made it possible for me to pursue my passion of becoming a sports broadcaster. The program they had here and the direction it could take me was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Knowing that I could talk to a professor or a counselor about literally anything that has to do with my academia or even just my personal life was encouraging and exciting to know. The friends and the roommates that I've had in the last three years have made my quality of life a thousand times better. I am a GCU low and I will forever always be one. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. GCU right now with a commanding lead over Longwood. 80-48 the score there. But let's take a look at the college landscape across the nation when we look at the AP Top 25. Right now you're seeing uh, Arizona State at number three. Their last victory came over the squad GCU playing right now in Longwood. They beat them earlier this week. And uh, number five spot, UNC. Oh. I'm going to let Scott explain oh. that one. But they went down, and it was not pretty last night. Yes, 79-75, the final there. But Oklahoma is coming out strong right now. Their freshman, Trey Young, tied an NCAA Division I record for assists in a game mm -hmm. with 22. And the Sooners win over Northwestern State. That was impressive. Not only 22 assists, he also had... 26 points in that game. No man showed out. You know, I was looking, uh, looking maybe to get a dog for Christmas, you know? A puppy? You know, I was looking at a terrier. Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> That's a Wofford Terrier that uh, Barry would be referring to. Yeah, my team just didn't come to play, and Wofford took a big old lump of coal and stuck it right in the stocking, nice. Roy Williams' stocking. Not smart play down the stretch. It's not the best, not the best clock management and play calls I'd seen either out of Coach Williams. Just saying. Milstead. Was it Joe, Unart, uh, Joe Lenardi? Yeah. The college uh, basketball guy, he said it was the worst loss since 1985 mm. by any defend defending national champion at home. That's how historic that upset was. Wow. Okay, we can stop talking about that. Yeah, okay. Shields turned around. Pushes Three it in. Shields. Minute and a half to go. Lopes are going to improve to 9-3 and three on the season and head out to Louisville for a game Saturday afternoon. Oh, she looked for Ibrahima. Kerwin Smith. Kerwin Smith had some evil thoughts behind that offensive rebound and slam. 
That young fella says, I want more minutes. <laughs> I want to show this coaching staff they want me on this offensive glass. Sheik's eyes of vein is called. Kerwin Smith's out there. Nehemiah Allen is out there. Ibrahima Shankare. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, we've been talking about holiday traditions um, in other countries. Ibrahima is from Senegal, and it is a very a hot part of the season right now. We talked about some places being cold. Well, like uh, Australia, it is a hot uh, season right now there, like summer. And uh, the churches are all decked out in lights. The school children are singing carols and learning about Pierre Noel, Santa Claus in the former French colony. Hmm. Man, you don't just get basketball on those shows. You know what I mean? Good Little thing Kate's here. Holiday traditions and all kinds of U.S. history. Yeah. It's great, great wardrobe, great fashion ideas. We're festive. Coach yep. Marley didn't join us with the uh, festive attire. I, right? I don't know what the heck ah. he's doing there. He, he's just trying to win a ball game. He said, I'm going to leave all that fun stuff for you guys, and I'm going to try to work hard. I wonder what he's going to wear when he goes on that road to Louisville. You think you all got that? That same tie, it's oh, like some that. luck in that tie there. Look at the lights working, look at that. And the hat, that is a strong effort by those four. It came correct. Yeah. They didn't just mail it in. Under a minute to go, winding it down inside Franklin. 84 points. Oh, Kerwin Smith said, no, you're not. Franklin's going to try it again, and it doesn't go. Third time. Look at Franklin. Oh, look at that. He's, oh, he works hard, night. doesn't he? That kid has been battling all night long. I, I tell you, working hard inside, he's one for seven from the field. And it seemed like three or four of those misses had great opportunities to go in. And first of all, give, give Kerwin Smith some credit right here. He just says, yeah, that ain't going to work. Better try something different. And Franklin says, I won't be intimidated. I'll come right back in here and get the body contact, draw the foul, go to the line. Pope's season high for points, 87 against Grambling State. They have 84. Some days are just days like that. Hey, you can work as hard as you want. You can prepare as hard as you possibly can. And you go to the line, you end up one of seven from the field and one of four from the free throw line. You know, my, I thought I played pretty good, but just couldn't get that ball in a hole. Billstead comes back to his right. Allen takes the feed back. Nehemiah Allen. Our sophomore from Lake Oswego, Oregon. Go ahead and put a smile on his face. Everybody having some fun out here. Look at this one more time. Look at that little dish pass. Kerwin Smith finds his bench buddy. Cut to the basket. Eighty-six points. Man, season high in points tonight. You know, one of the highest field goal shooting nights they've had in a long time. Inside, coming into the game, Dominic Iziani. I like the way they shot the ball from behind the arc. That'll do it. See, they had 13 or 14 three-point shots in this one. Everybody had some fun. Ladies and gentlemen. 86-56, 30 point decisive victory. The Lopes improved to nine and three on the season. Vernon gets some rest as the game was well in hand. Josh Braun took a seat after a little tweak of the ankle. Casey Benson took a seat as well. They'll be well rested after a long trip over to Louisville. They'll be getting on the plane tonight. Taking on the Cardinals Saturday afternoon, 11 a.m. local time. We'll step aside, be back with Dan Marley's post-game press conference and much more as we wrap it up here from GC Arena in Phoenix. Lopes win it, 86-56 over the Longwood Lancers. Founded on the belief that the entrepreneurial dream is an engine that drives innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level 
catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu business. I am Laura Lozoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together, the sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. 86-56, the final score. Field goal percentage, 49.2. Three-point field goals, 13 of 34. The rebounding margin, 42-26. Assist, 22 to 5. Look at the bench points. Mm. Oh, my goodness. 50 to 7. Yeah, you had two players off the bench in double figures. That Fifi Adu had 14, and Matt Jackson did it again tonight. He's been wonderful off that bench, 10 points. Well, obviously, they needed a nice string of games here against Mississippi Valley State and Longwood to get that win total back up after a tough double overtime loss at Boise State. Now they head out on the road for four straight. Yeah, and that's why you wanted a game like this one. Uh, it lets you see that they could play against the man. They could play against the zone and execute their offense. Their defense was wonderful. They got their break going for initial baskets, and they got secondary break opportunities for three-point shots. So clicking on all cylinders are feeling real good about the way they're playing on both sides of the basketball. Now for the coaching staff here to continue to crack that whip, let them go that it's going to be a different opponent, a quality opponent that they're going to see when they play against Louisville. They have some extreme length inside. Let's talk about our player of the game. It's Fifi Adu with 14. Well, I like the way this guy came in the game. He knocked down his first three-point shot, so that tasted good. Let me get another one over here from the right side. Defense is going to sag off, and then he gets the high handoff, uh, dunks that one down. And I love this one right here because he had the defender, backs him up, and drives him hard, a little snaps back with a little mid-range jump shot. And that gave him eight quick ones, and I love that one, getting behind the defense and getting a bucket in transition. So nice job by Fifi Adu coming off that bench. Congratulations, player of our game. Six of eight from the field, two of four from the arc. Fifi Adu, our player of the game. Now let's send it into the post-game press conference area. Kate Longworth, Paul Coro, guys. All right, thank you very much, guys. And Paul, we were just talking about the really good, strong pace they came out with in that first half, especially. Very fast pace, firing on all cylinders. This is kind of just that victory you want to get before the team hits the road. Exactly. I mean, you want to be playing at your peak when you go into a game like Louisville. They came out, didn't take this game lightly. Um, we've seen some games where they've been maybe too methodical, especially when zones slow, but their own defense is what set it up. You know, getting so many stops early, they got out and played with much quicker pace. Their passing was crisp. They moved the ball, they moved feet, and then the bench came in and just kept that up. Everything that the starters did, the bench came in and duplicated, if not <laughs> added to it, especially Fifi moving back into the bench role. And Marley had talked the other day about that moving to the to the bench might get him more scoring opportunities because he'd been shooting right. so well, and that really proved to be the case tonight. What do you know? Dan Marley knows a thing <laughs> or two about basketball, right? We've seen that play out and talked about Louisville, and then let's also look to that next game um, at Orleans Arena next week against Morgan State. It's a neutral site. Exciting game for fans. It's a free game. They can attend if they're in the area. But exciting for GCU because that is where the WAC tournament will be played in March. They're eligible for it now, so this can be kind of a scouting trip, do you think, for the team? Yeah, absolutely. Get comfortable in those confines. That's probably the most important week of the program so far, you know, to try to get in the NCAA tournament by winning that that champ, WAC championship, and that'll get, make them feel comfortable at that site. I think, you know, as much as it, we'll call it a neutral site game, that probably still will feel like a bit of a home game because it's a Lopes on the Road event, a lot of people going up. Like you said, it's free for anybody who wants to go, and I think anybody who probably walks into that arena is going <laughs> to gravitate to the GCU side with all the purple in there. And obviously this team will be uh, very well tested before WAC play starts with this uh, very uh, complex uh, 
road trip, right, coming up. And they're spending the holidays away from home. We'll see how they come together. We'll see how they build that chemistry. You hear about that a lot for teams when they're on the road. They build that strong camaraderie. But how do you think this is all going to play out September 6th when they're up at Seattle University? Yeah, I think we'll probably see how mature of a team they are for going through this stretch. You know, this Louisville game is much like uh, their exhibition against Nevada, their Boise State double overtime game where they've They've shown they can play with those top you know, programs in the nation. Louisville's probably, even though in name they're a lot larger program in quality this year, they're probably not that different, and they can go in there and compete with them. And now an early Christmas present for fans at home, Dan Marley, still in the stat sheet. I'll get it back. It's Christmas season. Did you get me a gift? Well, this might be the gift. Uh, good win. You're always a little nervous about these, especially when we're flying out tonight. We got a big road trip, so I thought our guys came out really focused, uh, played really well in the opening minutes there, shot the ball extremely well. Um, bench came in, Fifi, a lot of energy, Matt, everybody. So um, just a good win. You know, those are two home games that you really kind of get nervous for, but our guys did a great job of coming out and just taking care of business, so proud of them. Yeah, Fifi, I mean, he's a good player. He's starting to get a little confident. And, you know, and the best thing is, you know, Oscar got going a little bit too. So just reversing the roles a little bit. Um, I think Oscar is a, more of a starter. And Fifi coming off the bench can get it going. So both those guys, Oscar the second half, you know, got it going. He's, you know, so athletic when he flies around. And that's when he's really good is when he crashes the boards and just uses his athleticism, makes, you know, his three point and the shot easier. So proud of both those guys of how they played. I um, thought they did a good job. Uh, I mean, when you can play 10, you know, you know, Kerwin and, and uh, um, Damari, that's 12, really 12 guys. Um, you can't play that many, but, you know, we got some talented guys. So uh, we'll see how they uh, hold up against Louisville and Illinois and, and Morgan State and guys like that. But uh, we got guys that can go in and play, you know, four or five minute stretches really hard defensively. And that's what we try to key on is get out there and let our defense uh, – uh, get our offense going and, and get pick up our energy. So um, all those guys are doing a good job there, but um, all those guys understand what they have to do, and um, you know they did a good job. These are games that are sometimes are hard, and I was proud of our guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, we know we didn't kind of get blown. I think we lost by 60, so we really got blown out. But that's why we're flying out tonight. We got a red eye at you know flights at 12:30. We get into Louisville at 9:30 in the morning. Uh, that way, at least we'll just be in there and we'll be able to practice and probably get a little bit of rest and we have another afternoon game. So uh, it's a team that's obviously very good, but I told our guys I expect us to go in there and really compete and win the game. That's uh, We're past the point of just showing up. So, uh, you know, tonight hopefully we'll get some rest on the plane and when we get there we'll be a little energized and have a nice practice and, and be ready to go on Saturday. Did you think the offense played with more pace tonight or was that the offense defensive stops? Uh, you know, we, when, when you hit jump shots, it's always a little bit better. You know, if he shot at ball well, Jared, you know, shot it well. Matt came in and shot it well. Um, so when you start hitting jump shots, everything kind of loosens up. And then, you know, we kind of let them back in the game, which was which was a tough deal for me. I wanted them to, you know, keep playing. But we came out in the second half and a good, did a good job. So uh, we just got to, you know, continue to shoot the ball that well. But it can't be just living by the jump shot. We got to be able to attack. And most of our stuff will come off our defensive pressure. Ali, I think so. He's starting to figure it out. He's got to get stronger with the basketball. Um, but he's doing a good job. I thought Rob was a little bit more aggressive. Uh, he's a much better shooter than he is right now. He can really shoot it, but he's not shooting the ball well. But I liked how he took the ball to the basket. He's starting to figure it out a little bit. But those, both those guys with their size have to be more physical and got to be stronger with the basketball. Coming into a game like tonight, is there any discussion to not look ahead to move and focus on this game? There's a lot of discussion. I told our guys that we've given away enough games and we're not good enough to uh, look past anybody. And um, we're always looking ahead to the whack, not just Louisville, but we always want to be able to learn and get better each night that we play. And tonight was an opportunity for us to get better and learn about each other and play hard and uh, continue to you know do well on defense. And I thought we did that for the most part. So um, you know we're, we're we're not looking past anybody. We got to try to get better every game and uh, and work on our game. And our guys have to learn and get experience. Drive, kick, drive, kick. You know, it's it's not that hard. I mean, you got to get 
uh, get into the paint. There's going to be shot blockers come. You got to have good spacing and just move the basketball. And we've done a better job of that lately of moving the basketball, trying to make the other extra pass. I mean, we had 22 assists tonight, uh, assist tonight, so I think we're starting to move the ball a little bit better. So I guys understand that. Um, so we'll just have to do that uh, come Saturday is, is pick our spots. But once you get into the paint, if somebody's there, just find the open guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, these guys, I mean, you think about it. Josh has played at every environment there. Casey obviously played at Oregon, has done all that. Oscar's been to Duke, started as a freshman. Matt, Jared, all down the line. Um, and Ali and, and Roberts are two foreigners who know what the hell's going on, so they don't even know where Louisville is, so we'll be all right. Thanks, Paul. Here's a stat sheet. Merry, Merry Christmas. The holiday spirit is abundant. <laughs> Coach the Marley three keys. is happy. Frosty, the snowman. Yeah, I think it was really good. I mean, GCU did a great job shooting that ball from behind the arc. They won that battle there. These two top three-point field uh, defensive teams behind the arc. So 13 to 34, and GCU just three of 15 for the uh, Longwood. And come all you faithful, it was really that bench that came in there and did a great job. Wow. 50 points off the pine. That's got to be some sort of a school record. And then do you hear what I hear? And Lopes made some noise there in that first half, a 32-2 scoring run. Now they got to continue that when they get on that bird tonight and they land in Kentucky. they got to be ready for Louisville. Whole another level of intensity, a level of, uh, wow, whole different level. They've only had two losses, top 25 programs. They're 9-2. and two. They're under a new head coach. Had a little bit of turmoil, obviously, in Louisville. Seem to have kind of leveled off there, and they're playing really good basketball. They are. Dang Adele. He's yeah. the guy that they're really going to have to pay attention to. That'll be good. I mean, they've played in this environment before. They've already been to Louisville. They've been to Rupp. They've, been, you know, Cameron Indoor. Yeah, they play, they play great places, great venues, you know. Uh, uh, played up in Indiana there, and so uh, they, they should know how to handle this. I love the fact that they got a guy like a fifth-year senior in Casey Benson to be able to handle that pressure. He did so good in St. John's and again in Boise State. I think you know Josh Braun's going to play a little bit better uh, than he did against against Boise State and St. John's. So I look for a tightly controlled contest. Just got to take care of the basketball against that length of Louisville. You know these jackets. We got so many compliments. What do you think? Sure we should, did. should we bring them to Vegas? Huh? No. Should we? No. No. Let's retire them. Really? Yeah, they're undefeated. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh. Well, we hope you join us when we're in Las Vegas. We'll be there, take on Morgan State. I guess we'll be wearing something completely different. The Wolves are on the road to Louisville on the 23rd to take on the Cards. Be sure to tune in at 11 a.m. to the Fanatic, 1580 a.m., 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM. Michael Potter, Tom Kuyper on the microphones. The next televised game of GCU men's basketball next Wednesday, December 27th, when the Lopes head to Las Vegas to take on the Morgan State Bears at the Orleans Arena. If you can't make it up to Vegas, be sure to tune into your viewer online at GCU.tv. 6.30 Mountain Time for the Lopes pregame show. Tickets are free if you're in the Las Vegas area. General admission seating, first come, first serve. So we hope to see you up in Vegas post Christmas. Well, that'll do it from here at GCU Arena tonight. The Lopes beating the Longwood Lancers handily 86 to 56. Please join us again Wednesday night from Las Vegas. GCU taking on Morgan State at that Orleans Arena. But for until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel. All of us wishing you a very, very Merry Christmas.